year. Welcome to the Tacos and Geeks podcast and happy new year. We are back after another long hiatus. Life happens, people. Anyway, I am Justin here and we're going to introduce everybody. Go ahead. Take the ball. Sean, what's up? How you been? Hey, what's up? Happy New Year, everybody. This is Sean, a true comic book fan, where you can find me on my various podcasts from this one, the Tacos and Geeks, also Bearing Goods, and the Chronicle podcast, which is also taking a hiatus right now until we come back for this year. Uh, you can also catch me on the Tacos and Geeks for writing videos and other various reviews. Uh, Nadia? <laughs> hey, guys. Gotham Geek Girl here. Good to be back. Uh, been working on a bunch of things. You can find me at GothamGeekGirl.com. I uh, have a few reviews out there, a lot of unboxings and cool geeky stuff. Jarrell. All right, what's up, y'all? It's uh, Icon with Red Eyes Entertainment. We're actually about to come back from hiatus because this week starts uh, DC Return Week. We got Batwoman, Legends of Tomorrow, Superman and Lois, The Flash, and Peacemaker all start this week. And we're going to review all of it, which means I will be getting no sleep. <laughs> And just a quick question, Jarrell. How many Nightwing shirts do you need? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this, is a, this is a hoodie. <laughs> how much Nightwear attire do you need? <laughs> it was the only thing I could find at Comic-Con that I liked. Okay. Plus, like, before we did the podcast, I went to the gym before I came here, and I was actually working out with the hoodie on. So, <laughs> yeah, that's my favorite. Nightwing's my favorite DC character. Shut up. <laughs> of course you love Dick Grayson. <laughs> All right. Well, it has been one hell of the end of the year. So we're going to do a quick recap of certain things. You know, we're going to talk a little bit, obviously, but I guess the big one we could talk about is Mr. One Billion, which was Spider-Man No Way Home and the future of Spider-Man and what is going to happen. Um, this will be a spoiler podcast. So we're going to spoil Hawkeye, spoil Spider-Man, spoil things in CW that's going on over there. So if you don't want to be spoiled, go watch that stuff and come back here later. I'm just I don't want to hear no comments. See, read any comments. Did you spoil the movie? If you ain't watching by now, I mean, I mean, the thing is, at this point, if you haven't Marvel watched, Hawkeye, it. yeah, yeah, if you haven't right? watched Hawkeye, you haven't watched Spider Man. There's, there's an issue. Like, yeah. So let's kick things off with the future of Spider Man. And I mean, me and Sean touched on this a little bit um, on our review, but that ending kind of like i said before it kind of writes spider-man out of the mcu while keeping him in the mcu gave sony a nice back door just in case business doesn't go play well with others so you have spider-man in his uh own domain without the mcu there and uh nadia first want to get your take on the film and what did you thought about it yeah so um i had done a quick review on it and i actually gave it an 8.5 I freaking loved it. I was like so emotional in the theater. Like I legit cried so many times. Ironically, I didn't cry over Aunt May. I cried over seeing Andrew and Toby. <laughs> like I was like bawling, like clapping. Like I just felt like a little kid. Like it was just like, I don't know. It's so freaking exciting. Cause like there've been rumors about it, but for, ac for it to actually freaking happen was like, oh man. Um, but I'm just trying to think of like some of the things that I had to say about it. Uh, Basically, I think what I liked is that they showed each individual Spider-Man and kind of gave them, I'm trying to find a way to describe it, but like a moment to shine. Like even like Andrew saving the new MJ, it was like, oh my God, like it was beautiful. Like you saw the- His, re his redemption, he got redemption. Yeah, redemption, perfect. So like you saw all of them connect together and like when they hugged, it was like, Oh man, I just freaking loved it. I still think amazing. I'm sorry. Well, I still think Spider-Man 2, Sam Rami is the best Spider-Man film ever made. But this movie is still at the top of my list. It was freaking phenomenal. Like I cried, I laughed. I the it also redeemed the villains, like Electro. Um, he was so much more enjoyable in this film than in his own movie. And then of course to see uh, Doc Ock again was crazy and Green Goblin, those guys are my favorite villains of all time. So, well, in the movie standpoint, Spider-Man. Yeah. Jarrell? Oh no, please let, let, let me go last. Cause uh, <laughs> I, I insist, please go ahead, Sean. <laughs> Oh, here we oh, go. Lord. Some DC bullshit coming out. 
Listen, is this gonna be a get out? I don't, even, I don't even know why. I don't even know why the D word got brought up. We talk about Spider Man, right? <laughs> like everybody knows from this podcast is gonna come up some 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 Marvel Spider Man nonsense, but. Wasn't even going to bring that up, but please, yeah. but please share share your thoughts on 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 the but amazing. I, I will I will say I I enjoyed Spider Man this one more than honestly I have to say the previous two. Like I I like the previous two, but this one was a culmination of everything that they bought together. I mean, like Nadia touched on it, it's the redemption story. I mean, I think one of the biggest things in the theater was the scene where MJ is falling, uh, Tom Harlan. Holland is reaching to get her. He's about to grab her. He gets snatched up by the Green Goblin. Everybody's like, oh my God. And then you just see uh, Garfield jump out. And I mean, I think the theater cheered because I've seen a lot of videos where the theater's cheered. And then when he lands with her, he looks at her and he has tears in his eyes and he goes, are you okay? And she goes, yes. And you can see at that moment, he got his redemption for missing Gwen Stacy and her dying. And it was just like also the redemption where Tommy Maguire's character got to actually help and cure Doc Ock. You know, like he's he was the Doc Ock that he enjoyed and he mentored, he admired, and he was back to, I guess you could say back to normal. And he wasn't so much a villain. He was just there. He helped them. Uh, Jamie Foxx's character definitely got a good redemption. I was kind of that nerdy Jamie Foxx. This one, he was kind of way confident, way better look. All right. Let's be honest. Like, <laughs> That was a way better look for Electro. Like, and uh, Sandman was also good. The lizard. Um, we don't give enough shout out to the tree. I think nobody gives any respect to the tree uh, in the whole movie. I think, uh, you know, the unsung partner of the Sinister Six, nobody gave respect to the tree. But um, I think the movie, if it's not at the top, I agree. I think Spider-Man 2, Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man 2 is always going to be up there. But this one gives a good run for its money because it had everything in there. Even the only thing I would say is if you're not a Spider-Man fan and you haven't watched the others, you should because that's what makes this movie so great. Watching everybody come together. Uh, some of the things, even the villains that they were showing at the end in the shadow. You got Craven a Hunter. You got the rhino in his suit. You, I'm not sure if you could see Morbius or not, but you could see like a lot of characters that we were, were probably all clamoring for to come out in another movie. And they did give um, Holland a good send off like, hey, he can continue in the MCU or he can't. And the one thing that I love is that they kind of ended the story with him and Tony Stark. So he's not sporting any of Tony's high tech armor or he's not he doesn't have happy to help him he actually put together the original blue and red spider-man suit and was swinging around in that and that was like you could just clap at that like you know like you love the other suits that the you know mcguire garfield and mcguire had but this was like the bright it reminds me of like the anybody who knows like the 1970s or the spider-man cartoon suits so i think overall this was a Marvel did its thing. It was a great push to the story. And like Justin said, it's a great out if Sony and, and Disney don't happen to get along. It's a good out for them. All right, Icon, you have the... Uh, <laughs> why, why, the why, why you got to say it like that, though? Because <laughs> we all know you're going to say something that's going to probably trigger somebody yeah. online. And, and the next thing you know, we're getting comments. And as always, so Jarrell, you got uh. to... Well, I saw it. I saw the movie on January 1st and I saw it at 10 o'clock in the morning on purpose because I didn't want to be around like other people. Like I wanted to watch it with like, you know, clear head, no kids, you know, like cheering or clapping or whatever. Um, I feel like I watched two movies. I did a review for it the same day. It's on my channel. Check it out. I actually gave the movie a seven and it's it's not it. It wasn't a bad film. I enjoyed it for what it was, but I watched a very good nostalgia film. And then I also watched a very bad storyline. So as far as like the good is concerned, one thing I will say that nobody brought up, I'm surprised I didn't bring up the one moment because like the, the Pete, like the Tobey Maguire, that didn't bother me because Andrew Garfield, that didn't bother. They spoiled, like you said, they spoiled all that. They told us all that stuff prior to the thing. The only cameo that actually like made me smile and I got a little choked up was when Matt Murdock showed up. 
because I was like, when he, cause when he got in trouble and then somebody was like, you better get a lawyer. I was like, this is, it was almost like, this is a layup. If y'all don't do this, <laughs> I was like, if y'all don't hire Matt Murdock to be his lawyer. And then when he showed up in the next scene, I just, I just wish we would have got a court scene. It would have been awesome if we had a court scene with him actually defending Peter Parker, you know, well, and then they, to have him. They actually spoiled that also. Not because they spoiled that also, but. No, I'm saying, well, I, I didn't, I didn't know about that. That was the one thing I was actually able to stay away from. So when I saw him, I was legitimately like, oh, shit, it's Matt Murdock. I, I, <laughs> like, well, I actually thought the actual bait and switch was build it up to Matt Murdock. But then She-Hulk shows up instead of him as his lawyer. Oh, instead of no, him lawyer. Yeah, because they're both lawyers. So I thought that yeah. was going to be the bait and switch. But. Well, the, the court scene is apparently a, a deleted scene. So, yeah, maybe maybe they ever give them a director's <laughs> cut. Mm -hmm. But like I said, but I was I was really happy to see it. And then when he caught the brick, and then everybody looked at him like it was this MF blind, like like that that was that was done very well. This is the one Marvel film where comedy actually didn't bother me because it's Spider Man, you know. So you embrace that and you accept that. The part that act, you know, like, like you said, like I love seeing Jamie Fox, you know, like I love his character. He was actually very good. Like he was funny, you know. Like the other characters were funny. The thing that bothered me about the film, honestly, is the Doctor Strange aspect of it. Because when he went to Doctor Strange and told him, he said, listen, can you make everybody forget that I'm Spider-Man? And then Doctor Strange said, yeah, but if I do that, it might have like consequences on the multiverse. I was like, well, how? <laughs> like, how is you casting this spell affect the, like, what does that spell have to do with the multiverse? Like he was telling them like other things. He was like, oh, if you talk while I do the spell, it'll mess it up. How? It, there was never like anything involving him and all the magical mumbo jumbo. There was never an explanation. There was never a reason. It just seemed like, well, we want all these nostalgic characters in the film. So let's just come up with some BS, you know, like with a BS reason to get there. They never explained. How, that's like that's like me saying, hey, if Justin and I go online and play Street Fighter, like a building's going to explode in the middle of Manhattan. What does a building in Manhattan have to do with me and Justin playing Street Fighter? Like but that, 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 did he say that during the spell? He was like, stop talking because you're adding stuff to the spell that could mess it up. But that has nothing to do with the multiverse. <laughs> he literally told him before that he said, if I cast this spell, it could have effects on the multiverse. And I'm like, what the heck does that have? What does you ca He's cast a million spells. Why does this specific mind erasing spell affect the multiverse? But didn't, didn't he say he never explain that? Said, it, it, he kind of did. He said it affected the mold because he kept adding stuff too. Because remember, the spell was what? to get the world to forget he was Spider Man. Then he kept adding. He said, "Oh well, you got to let MJ remember, and you got to do this okay. the spell." And when the spell got messed up, he was like, "Okay, what you just did now is everybody. You opened up a portal to the multiverse because I the spell is now screwed up. Not so much that." That, legit, that legitimately that legitimately makes sense to you. Yeah, because he kept opening it up, right? I mean, what part of it didn't really you said, make you said you, you, you said this world. I'm trying to make people forget that you exist on this world. But he that said, has nothing to that has nothing to do did. with like other worlds. And, and then he, he said everybody that knows you're Peter Parker is getting pulled in here. How? Well, that I'll give you because that was a plot hole that I didn't get. Um, not the spell part because he already established because he messed up the spell, it opened a rip into the multiverse. That's the part I don't know if you kind of got like him. This the spell wasn't complete when he did it. He kept messing with the spell, so it ripped the hole open. But and, 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 that, and, that's, and that's and that's and that's another thing. If you're the person who's casting a spell, how does someone else? You know how many times people talked while he was casting spells? Oh yeah, I, I and like in like various other like movies and properties. Now all of a sudden somebody talk. So is the spell listening to Peter or is it listening to Doctor Strange? I mean, I, yeah, I it's, yeah <laughs> it's, a, it's a plot hole. And I mean, one of the other plot holes that I've even said, and the other thing was mm -hmm. that okay, how did okay you're saying everybody who knows he's Spider Man and Peter Parker. How did you, how does that happen when even Jamie Foxx breaks that theory down? When he was like, yo, he said, honestly, the way he said, the way you help people, you're always in the ghetto. I always thought you were black. So it shows you he didn't know that that was Spider, that Peter Parker was Spider Man. So how did he get, yeah, yeah how, did he, how did he get pulled in? But that's you a know, plot hole. Everybody has said, like, yeah. that didn't make sense. Like, that that brought, it didn't make sense. It could have been the other for Grace's Venom, but that would have really confused more people. So <laughs> I agree. They, 
you know, and, and that was another thing. Like, we could have got a Miles Morales Spider-Man. Why did only those specific two Spider-Men get brought in? But, but anyway, the other the other thing that bothered because me because he has a lot of action yeah, yeah, he ain't got a movie think, yet. Yeah, I don't think he has. <laughs> all these people, um, Black Panther didn't get a movie yet, and he got dropped in the Civil War. But yeah, but that's that's Marvel. But Marvel was that's an introductory intro, introducing him in. When it came to Miles Morales, they introduced him. They introduced elements of him in uh, what do you call it? Our uh, homecoming. Because remember, his uncle is the problem. Yeah, his uncle, yeah. So yeah. they talk, and I mean, there's a deleted yeah, scene. Yeah, there's a deleted scene where he's actually, when he's chained to the car, where he's actually telling him, Miles, I don't think I'm going to make it to you. So we know that Miles Morales there. is coming. He's there. He's just, he just hasn't gotten bitten by the spider. Or, you know, like, it's, we don't know. If, is the mantle going to follow what the comic book did in the Ultimate Universe, where young Peter dies? I mean, Justin did say this isn't out. Young Peter yeah. dies, and that's when Miles Morales takes over as a new Spider-Man. We don't know. It depends on because remember the MCU has power over. They don't have Spider-Man, but they do have, I think, ownership of the other properties of Spider-Man, meaning Miles Morales, Spider-Man twenty ninety nine. Um, actually, yeah. Sony has anything oh, Spider-Man. Uh, they, okay, they, so, just, yeah, so they, they it's can't just something it. else they're gonna have to share. You yeah. know. Pretty much. So basically, what the I mean, what you're saying is a sensible plot hole. Well, 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 I'm not saying it's But hold on, because I got because I got one more. This is the second thing that bothered me. So the end of the film, and you can tell the end of the film took place right before Hawkeye started because of the whole tree thing with <laughs> with Rockefeller Center. When he finally got the spell right, and they erased everyone's mind all across the planet. If nobody knows he's Peter Parker, clearly he didn't get Aunt May's inheritance because nobody knows he's Peter Parker. How did he get an apartment? Where's your social security card? How do you have money for food? He got an apartment in Manhattan and nobody knows who he is. Uh, again, it's a whole If you're gonna nitpick on little plot holes like that's that. Not, that's not nit- they made a big I'm gonna, I'm gonna, deal gonna, out of that at the end of the film. Be sure to have this same energy when we were some of Hold DC. On. Yeah, when we do oh, DC, you better nitpick oh, at the oh, little. Oh, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on, look who, hold on, who brought hold up, on, people, hold who brought on. up DC during a Marvel answer. conversation. I it up. <laughs> what I'm noticing is you're bringing up a lot of plot holes that are valid. I'm not saying they're not valid. They are valid. They're very valid. But make sure you emphasize these same plot holes with some of the other things because I can name about 20 plot holes in both Marvel and DC movies, films, and TV shows that nobody ever brings up when they're reviewing it. They're just like, okay, they're they're really good, and that's it. The yeah, plot holes are very valid. Like, the end point, I don't know if that's a plot my, my, you, Like, the reviews on my YouTube channel is all about exposing plot holes, so I do this all the time. He's but I, all, 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 I'm saying, all, all, all I'm saying, all I'm saying is a, like, great nostalgia made people ignore poor storytelling. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> I don't think the story was poor at all. I think highlighting all those plot holes, making them bigger than what they are, because they are there. But I think that's in any movie or TV show. Like there's, yeah. I think there's any anything that's out there, there's always, as good as the story could be, there's going to be a plot hole where somebody, just like you do, is going to say, yeah, what the hell happened with, this doesn't make any sense. Like, how did this person get to this? And how did they get to that? They're there. I don't know whether it's that writers write themselves into a spot where they're just like, you know what? Screw it. People will get over it once they see it. Like, yeah, that, you know, and, and honestly, that that's how I felt. I felt they were just like, well, this doesn't make sense, but screw it. People will be happy when they see Toby Maguire. He could have yeah, just got yeah, a I, job I, off screen. Yeah, I think the story overall was really good. There are parts of it where I'm like, yo, this doesn't make any sense. Like I said, the part where all the people knew that were coming through knew he was spider-man like that i did say house way because some of the people at the end i was like okay so um craven knows he's spider-man all, all, already um, <laughs> knows he's spider-man already like how many people in all these other universes and we've only seen three know he's spider-man so that is a plot hole but i was willing to say okay well they're they're just trying to make it exciting for everybody and i can let them well, to, I, I, I hope I hope you keep that same energy when DC does something like well, that. Well, well, hold on, hold on. Before we go into Hawkeye, let me just say this. 
as far as the whole multiverse uh, aspect goes of how people know he's Peter Parker, um, it doesn't technically, well, for Electro, yeah, that's a plot hole because that's from Amazing Spider-Man. But as far as Kraven, Scorpion, keep in mind, it's a multiverse. They could come from other forms of Spider-Man multiverse. Hell, that could, they could they could have pulled a Spider-Man from the animated series and just put it there. You know, it, it's it's possible they could just put it any form of multiverse. It's, it's the multiverse. So it can come from anywhere just because we haven't seen it yet. Doesn't mean it didn't get pulled from somewhere else. So just that aspect that's yeah because they're gonna tie in venom somehow yes. yeah so, so i mean i personally Jarrell, you're not wrong you're not wrong <laughs> but honestly it's just like kind of reach it when it comes to how this no, it, it, it was it was enough to the point where i wasn't gonna jump out the theater being like that was the greatest movie of no, all no, time no, 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 no. that was just it, like that was really awesome nostalgia but y'all still got to explain half of that shit that came out of Doctor Strange's mouth. Yeah, and hopefully the multiverse of madness. And like I always say, when it comes to these movies, Marvel and DC, look at them as chapters and not a complete story. Mm-hmm. Because mm-hmm. usually later on, they realize like, oh shit, we got we got to fix this plot hole here. Okay, this movie, you fix it. So I mean, give it time. But let us. I want to pass this to Nadia because Nadia brought up Hawkeye. Um. Or, she wrote a damn good article about that. <laughs> like, <laughs> off, off, off article, yeah, so, so. I actually saw it. I, I, yeah, I, 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 I definitely got got to go pass the baton to Nadia. I did not finish Hawkeye yet, but I know <laughs> I was happy when Kingpin, which I did predict Kingpin was going to be here. Um, so Another Nadia, spoiler. go ahead. What happened with Hawkeye? <laughs> Why were you disappointed? <laughs> go ahead, go in. So it was funny because like. Watching the show, I was first, I was like, six episodes? Are you sure? Six episodes. How are they going to tie this up? Um, when it first started, the first episode, I liked it. I had my little nitpicks, um, but it wasn't nothing too too crazy at first. I was like, all right, let me let me give it a chance. Um, one of my complaints, like, over time was like, Kate, like, um, why did they think she was Ronin? Are they retarded? But in the comics... <laughs> <laughs> the tracksuits are kind of um oh sorry i'm not supposed to say that word i apologize <laughs> the the tracksuits <laughs> um are kind of dumb so i was like maybe they're just like emphasizing it but it was like ronin like the show did no justice to ronin like you have a little girl cosplaying in a ronin costume and you seriously think she's ronin like she went around the world a crazy assassin and you think that little girl is ronin it was just it was dumb um I loved uh Haley uh Steinfeld. I thought she was fantastic casting. I actually liked the casting of everybody. Um it wasn't the casting wasn't my problem. Um it was just like a lot of plot holes, a lot of things that made no sense. Um one of my other complaints was like the LARPers were ridiculously corny and like I'm born and raised in Brooklyn, New York from New York City. I know maybe one cop that would LARP. <laughs> Most cops would kick your ass <laughs> like though they didn't read like police officers to me at all like police larping in central park it just wasn't very realistic and i was annoyed that the only time they showed cops was i brought this uh up when i was talking about the finale i kind of broke everything down but the cops don't show up until they arrest kate's mom so you're telling me there's no police officers in this entire series while they're blowing up a bridge they're over here wrecking rockefeller center and over the tree yeah, they knocked down the damn tree and there's no cops. They're always heavily armed. Like, I'm talking SWAT. There are like, more cops around that tree than when anybody else come. Like, when yeah, if you call the cops, they're not coming. They're all at the tree. <laughs> like, yeah. I was like, yeah. it, it was just dumb. Like, that was like my little nitpicks, but I was like, all right, I'll, I'll let that little stuff pass. But like, there was just too much inconsistencies. Um, overall, I gave it a 6.5. I The 0.5 is being nice because. It did have like the fun jolliness. It felt very home alone, very like kind of felt like spy kids to me, honestly. Like I think my problem with Disney is they try to Disneyfy Marvel, whatever, they try to Disneyfy everything. And they had so many missed opportunities with the show. I was very upset with um Kazi with Clown. Uh essentially, if you know the comics, his character is I described him as like Joker meets Deadshot. He is supposed to be a deadly assassin. Like, you do not mess with this guy. He's frightening. He literally burnt down Clint's, um, like, burned his neighbor alive. Um, he's sick. He's like, like I said, like the Joker. 
And um, they did him absolutely no justice. And then he's not supposed to miss. Like in the show, he was a joke. His uh, one-on-one with Clint ended in like five seconds. And it was like, he just felt like a henchman. Like he he was not important at all. And um, also from the comics, I'm a big Echo fan. And I think uh, Alakwa, I hope I'm saying it right, Cox was perfectly cast. She was super badass. I loved her. Like when they first showed her, I was like, yes, I was like super excited. I felt like that excitement I felt with Daredevil. I was like, oh, maybe we're going to get some like real combat. And then I was like, no, like she was another letdown. Like she was great herself. But story wise, once again, if you're not a fan of the comic, anyone I've spoken to is like, oh, who's Echo? And I'm like, dude, she's the first Ronin. And like so many people don't know anything about Maya. And I was like, she's such a badass. Like, I can't wait for her own show. Hopefully it happens. Rumor has it, it might be a placeholder. But um, I'm freaking hyped for her show because that's how I knew Kingpin was going to be in this because essentially that's her like father, you call him uncle, like tie-in. Um, but uh, yeah, so basically in the comics, she thinks Daredevil kills her dad, not Hawkeye. So they kind of changed that up. But that wasn't a big deal. But I knew that's how I would tie her into her own series but going back to what I was saying people that aren't familiar with the comic this show did no justice to Echo like my friend was like who is she I don't care like I don't not gonna watch that show but me as an Echo fan I'm like hell yeah I would watch it so I'm like the show did her no justice the show did Kazi no justice um they changed the whole thing with Kate's parents in the comic her mom like dies when she's young dies but um her dad is the one that raises her So my problem with the show is that they didn't justify enough of her mom being a villain. It was just like, oh, your dad got involved in some bad shit back in the day. So I got tied up in this. They didn't establish her connection to Kingpin at all. They didn't say what she does, what she did, anything to really like make her a villain. I think Kate is a hypocrite because you're so Mm -hmm. quick to put your mom in jail but Ronan went around killing thousands of people and you don't give a shit. And you guys literally blew up people on the bridge and like, you're going to arrest your mom for like, not to say Mm -hmm. killing someone is good, but like for killing one dude that essentially maybe was to save your life. We don't really know. Yeah. And you know, I I feel like not to coach up, but I I said the same thing because if anything, I felt like they made, they sympathize the mom as a character because she literally told her, she was just like, listen, this, your father owed this man money. Somebody had to pay that debt. I did what I had to do to save this family. And I'm like, and I was like, yeah, she actually did. She did, she did what any parent would do. Why are you going to prison? Yeah. <laughs> like, that was one like, time was, a cop shows up. Yeah. You know, like that, that whole thing was stupid. Like Kate. And Kate had Kate no emotion. No. And it's like that. And that's another thing. Like that's your mom. Like even, yeah. even if you did, even if you did feel like your mom was a hundred percent, you know, like in the wrong without having the whole story, that's still your mom. I don't know anybody who's going to be that quick to throw you. The moment the mom said, if something happens to me, Kate, you won't know how to take care of yourself. I said, watch, they kill this chick. I said, watch something happen. Then when she got locked up, I said, there it is. Now Kate has to be alone. And now she has to prove that she can survive on her own. And her mom really didn't do anything wrong. Because in court, all her mom's going to say is like, well, Kingpin, you know, have me under his thumb. Well, and, oh, sorry. I got like mad. I'm just shitting on this. <laughs> like, um, <laughs> That brings me to like another point where I was like, essentially, Kingpin was minding his own business. They didn't establish him doing anything for like mm-hmm. them to like, I don't yeah. know, essentially like wreck Christmas. I feel like Kate and Clint <laughs> absolutely are responsible and need to pay all these damages because they wrecked the city for no reason. Like, how did he and- get out of prison? Didn't Daredevil put him in prison? Like- <laughs> I don't think he was ever caught at the end of the last Daredevil thing. I think he no, got, he got a, him, and, him and his wife got arrested. <laughs> like, remember, oh. remember, remember, yeah. remember when he was like laughing in his face when he was like, I got you. Ha, ha. <laughs> he was like laughing. It's the king this was, of Marvel. He's never going to stay in prison long. This was another issue. They had a Martha moment. Yes. I, Why is the I was like, are you thing? kidding me? Thank like, you for bringing that up. It was a up. moment. It was such a I was a like, if anybody moment. does not make that comparison, I was going to start choking people. So that I whistle. Was like, this whole time, she's like, after Clint, after Clint, after Clint. And the whole world already knows Natasha's story. Everyone knows she sacrificed yep. herself. And she just like, yep. that stupid little whistle thing. I was like, it, w- it wasn't done. You're right about that. <laughs> One whistle, and now we're right. best friends, right? <laughs> you got to you gotta fix your mic. It's not everything up. But before, before you guys continue, I just want to say something, and Justin knows where I'm going to go with this. Like, 
I have to honestly defend Ronan on one thing. All right. Everything you said was absolutely on point and no disagreeing with what he said. But the one thing I wish everybody would stop saying is Ronan killed 100 people who need to go to jail. Let's be let's be totally honest to break this down. Ronan was killing criminals. OK. And if you take the families of half these people, these criminals either extorted, killed or did anything else and ask them, is Ronan a criminal? They're probably going to look at you and say, hell no, because he revenged the family. Like Ronan didn't walk out and see the average Joe on the street and just like jukes him with a knife right there. He didn't say like, fuck it, I'm pissed. My family's gone. So everybody got to get what he did do was he went after criminals, criminal empires, everything they could possibly go after. Now, in any other comic book story, something going on with the audio, Justin, any, 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 anybody in a comic book story, most superheroes go after criminals. Now, we can talk about whether they go after them in a justice way, bring them to justice, or they do it like the Punisher, where the Punisher puts their puts them six feet under. What did Ronan do anything different than what the Punisher does? You know, and I mean the Punisher, granted, has gone to jail numerous times for his actions, but that's the point of Ronan's eminent amenity. Like nobody knows who he was. He was just going around there. He was taking out his anger of losing his family during the during the dis- everybody's disappearance and killing criminals on every continent. He went after the cartel. He went after the Yakuza. He went after the triad. I'm pretty sure, even though they didn't say it, he went after the Italians. He went after anybody in, in Africa. He went everywhere and took out criminals. So the whole case of Ronin killing people, yeah, he killed criminals. Like There are millions of superheroes in, in any comic book genre that kills criminals and then they walk off and either they get caught one day like the Punisher did and they go to jail and there's a couple of storylines where the Punisher went to jail that are absolutely phenomenal that people have not read right and that's it maybe Ronan should have gotten caught but he didn't and that's the only part I have an argument where everybody's like oh Ronan killed people yeah he did he killed a bunch of criminals let it go like that's the end of it He, he murdered a shitload of criminals, and then he felt bad about it later when he got his family because that wasn't him. Oh, right? that sounds- yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I'm just saying he did that, and then he got Disney fied. That is, that's <laughs> the oh. end of it. He, no, oh, I feel bad. <laughs> yeah, he, he got Disney fied. All of a sudden, they changed him from being this hardcore criminal, really dealing because you could tell in this series he was dealing with all the death he dealt out to, like Nadia said, this Home Alone Disney fied version of himself running around trying to get home for his family for Christmas, which I was like, oh boy. I was like, why does this scream home alone? Like the minute it was in Christmas setting, I was like, yeah, this might not be good. This might not this might be Metacore at best. The minute it was like, oh this is a Christmas series, like yeah, this thing gonna work. And then I said that too. <laughs> but not I, 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 I enjoy it. I mean I tried to enjoy it the best I could. Like I was able to get over Kate because Kate really bothered me because I was just like she's she was too like in your face, and I still to this day like I still feel like they should have, and it piss, it pisses me off more that he was in New York City with his daughter because I'm like y'all could have just went with his daughter instead y'all could have did something to where your daughter's in New York she got in trouble and now you and your daughter together because she knows how to shoot a bow and arrow y'all together team up to get her out of the trouble that she's in yeah. i didn't like the fact that they ended up using like you know like kate instead but well, yeah tra- case of comic character but i mean that's, that's the case i agree with you with that because it was the whole point of showing that she could shoot arrows in endgame yeah exactly you know I mean, like and, and, again, and, it's not, and it's not like and it's not like clint went to new york by himself you brought your daughter with you <laughs> I, think that, I, don't, I don't know whether they're still sold on the fact of either making kate part of the young avengers or making his daughter come out because we all know Scott Lang's daughter is going to yeah, come yeah. in and take over as like, I think either she's going to be Wasp mixed with Ant-Man and she's going to have her own thing, but um, who we never know. They could, you know, like give Kate her own thing with Echo or she could just go with the Young Avengers. We we don't know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that was my other complaint that like Kate didn't feel ready enough um, for me. Like they didn't do any kind of training like she literally went from doing that bell tower thing to being more um uh destructive 
like more dangerous like she could have killed a bunch of people like knocking down the damn christmas tree like yeah. i think she has no proper training to be an avenger like well, yes people said like she's she uh what do you call it like karate and fencing and all that but that's not enough like oh i took karate classes i think i'm gonna go beat a freaking black widow now and beat kingpin <laughs> like i think the show did a poor job of her properly training they had that one little scene where they were making like arrows together which was stupid in itself because he should have just had i made a whole section on that too the trick arrows. some of them were pointless but he should have just had them ready to go like they did no no formal training like that was just upsetting to me because like literally black widow could have just snapped this chick's neck and i know she's i guess playing around with her but they should have emphasized that a little more like she should have been like holding her head like biting her nails like you know, something to show that, like, Kate ain't got shit on me. I agree. And, like, they, they didn't do a good enough job of that. And I, and I will agree the Martha moment in that because I was trying to figure out, like, guys, like, she's like, OK, at a certain point, they gave a teeny bit of the backstory about what happened to her. Like, she was dusted and then she came back. But there's a point where there's got to be. And I swear to you, there has got to be a point where, where she hacked into an Avengers file and someone wrote Black Widow sacrifice herself yeah. and we get the other stone and to do whatever. And then the only thing I can think of is that she was so um, grief stricken when because we all, re- um, I hope everybody saw the Black Widow movie. Like she was so grief stricken that when um uh, Marie Dreyfus's character comes up and she puts that in her head that it was Clint that killed her that that's the only reason she couldn't think of because a lot of people do forget that that she put that in her head mm-hmm. that it was that it was uh, Hawkeye that killed her sister but which I was the question why does she want Clint off the board yeah which I hope they reveal that somehow soon because my thing is like there's no way and there's no way she could not have run into any of the still alive and active Avengers like Falcon, like Winter Soldier, people who were around during that era. I mean, you're running around here. You're a Black Widow. You are going to investigate everything. So there's no way you ran into to Falcon somewhere or Winter Soldier after all the shit they went through, like with the Super Soldier Syndrome um, Serum and everything else that you didn't run into any of them. Like, yo, what happened to my sister? Like, that's the first thing you're to do. Like, yo, what happened to my sister? Like, why? And they would explain that she gave herself up for the soul stone. But all that, just to really get the, she whistled, oh, my your sister taught me that whistle. That's what snapped you out of it? Not <laughs> the fact that Kate and everybody else said no, or him explaining, yo, I, I live with regret every day because your sister, it should have been me. Your sister gave herself up to go there. That didn't sound. I don't, even rem- I don't even remember the whistle, to be honest with you. Yeah, I remember the whistle from the. I don't even of- remember the whistle. I remember like the- when, when she did it. When he did it, I was like, "What the hell is that?" <laughs> whistle from, from the Black Widow movie, which is why I, I said forgot all. About, I forgot all about that. And- Why'd you do that whistle? Yeah. <laughs> How do you know that tune? <laughs> How do you know that? That's what snapped you out of. So yes, I was just like, that is definitely a Martha moment, and I was just like. All right, you guys really reached to make this like a Christmas. Like you really want the world to feel good at the end of this, like at the end of this movie. Like you just wanted such a happy ending and everything else. And the one thing I don't know if Nadia is going to touch on this. The whole thing was your wife left a watch. This what this what we fighting over. <laughs> your wife misplaced her watch, and somebody's going to put two and two together that your wife misplaced her her limited edition like. One of a kind shield watch, <laughs> and and this is what's gonna like come on, bro. Like, yo, y'all gotta dig deeper in the storytelling. Than that. Well, in Asia Ultron, Tony did allude that she is a shield agent because when he meets her for the first time, he was like, Aren't you part of shield? What like, you look like you're a shield agent, so I guess they took that line. Well, in the comics, anyway, she's supposed to be somebody big, like Hawkeye's wife was a shield agent in the comics, I, I believe. So, I, I get she is playing that particular character. I forgot the original comic book name, but I guess she changed the name, you know, just to because to stay under the radar. So I guess they just doing the piggyback off that throwaway line. Who knows? Yeah, because it was like it was like a weird way to like 
tie it up like rumors yeah. mockingbird or whatever yes but it was it. like you. this whole thing like with the echo having the watch essentially meant nothing like why were people after the watch it exactly. had no purpose yeah all. the watch storyline because when he was talking about it, he was like i gotta get the watch back I was like, wait, aren't we looking for the suit? <laughs> like, where did when when did the watch come into, you know, like I, I was I felt like did I miss something? Like I think they alluded to some kind of tech in the watch that's there, but I'm like, they can't be tech so advanced in that damn watch. And then you just then at the end, you walk over to your wife, like, I love you. Here's the watch back. Thanks for it. Hey, make sure you keep your hands on this watch. I almost want one of the kids to find the watch and just do something. <laughs> Sell so like, it in school. You want to trade for a Pokemon card? Exactly. Like, like people, she should have. She should have Luke Skywalker did. Like, took it and be like, yeah. At, at the end of the day, people, you're missing the important part. It's Christmas. So you, oh, that's, that's the whole. That was the whole theme of this entire show. But it's Christmas. Christmas. We'll click. Make it home Christmas, for Christmas. And they Disneyfied Kingpin. That, oh my God. Oh, let's uh, talk about. They're the, trying the, to have the, D'Onofrio saying like, "I'm the same Kingpin." No, you're not. He was new. No, you were not. So bad. I mean, he did oh kind of beat the ass though in that toy store. Yeah, he did. I, yeah. <laughs> I, like, uh, I mean, that, that 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 was another thing. Like, I need somebody to explain to me because I was under the impression Kingpin didn't have superpowers. I saw this man get shot with arrows. He got run over by a car. He got he got blown up, and I'm just like, does he have Luke Cage serum, or did we miss something? Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna quote. <laughs> so the comic book explanation of the Kingpin is that he is more than the average human because he has muscle mass of a sumo wrestler so and sumo wrestlers as big as they are are like 90 percent muscle and not fat so apparently Arrow to the chest though. no no i agree but no but remember the suits that he has were made by the guy who they're they can withstand almost anything it's almost like super armor because remember he finally makes a suit for daredevil at the end so yeah. i think he still has access to those suits that they're not like regular claw suit that he can take their Kevlar ammo. Yeah, he can take gunshots, ammo, and arrow, and it does nothing. But supposedly the kingpin is like uber stronger than the average person. So that's why he's able to do all that. But you are right. It was like at one point I'm like, yeah, you stronger, bro, but you kind of throwing cars around like it ain't like he ripped a car door off the hinges. I'm just like, does he when did he get super strength? I, 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 I was more Oh, go ahead, Jess. I've never seen a sumo wrestler take a bomb to the damn face. <laughs> like, like, damn. Like, go ahead, I was just more upset that he wasn't refined. Like, I wrote a whole explanation on that on Kingpin. And Daredevil, he is like suit and tie. I'm immaculate. I'm like the fucking bomb. Like, everything bricks. to the T. Not a, not a iron, not an iron, not a wrinkle <laughs> in his shirt. Like, Kingpin was pristine, like, mm -hmm. to the detail. And then, like, yes, the Jackson Mafia are essentially like comedic, I but like, I, I feel like Kingpin would be way more organized, like way more organized than this. That's what I said. Like, like he wouldn't have those clowns on his payroll. Yeah, I, I felt like he was depressed Thor in this one. Like, he was not, <laughs> he was I'm not, going on vacation. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not the same person. Like, I feel like he sat in a room. He was just drinking beer and didn't understand. Like, his wife left, and he like he has nothing left. So. <laughs> Care anymore? See, I, yeah, I wasn't like I, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't think that the six episodes did them justice either because no. the yeah. scene where where when he found out the Black Widow was involved and then he told Kate he was like, "We're not partners. Take your ass home." Usually, there's like an episode or two where they're apart and then something happens that brings them together. She came right back in the next episode, <laughs> and I was, and then he just spoke, to, and then in the next episode he was like, "Kate, you're my partner." I'm like, "Bro, you just said last night." <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, but when you got six episodes, it's like, all right, we got to hurry up and bring them back together. And if that's the case, don't split them apart. You, know, Do you like, remember? Shit. Sorry, that reminds me of a scene where it didn't make any sense. Like, I think they were leaving the the car lot or the junkyard, whatever it was. Um, and it was nighttime. And then they got in a cab. And then later it was like complete daytime. But <laughs> it was like, Probably like, I mean, traffic in New York is bad, but not six hours bad. Like yeah. the time change made no sense. Like it was yeah. like 10 o'clock a.m. sun, but it yeah. was just like 8 p.m. two minutes ago. <laughs> like, it was no sunrise. Like yeah, it's like, where did y'all drive to? Where did y'all like, drive? Y'all <laughs> mm -mm. was leaving the back of the cab and the cab was just like, fuck it. I'm not even going to charge. <laughs> 
Well, this is going to drive around. To, to but, be a little bit I mean, devil's uh, advocate, um, I think a lot of it for the short episodes, one is Jeremy Remnant is busy as fuck. That's just one thing. Um, these guys, these big time actors, I do not think they're going to commit to like a 13, 22 full episode season. No, eight, eight would have been good. Yeah, eight eight would have been good, but I don't even think he had it. Is the, they were I mean, Falcon Winter Soldier well. was six too. Yeah. Like the longest Marvel TV show so far was WandaVision. Yeah. I think I think what the thing is, the Disney is trying to keep the unless it's like Star Wars or something. Like I think they're trying to keep these Marvel shows, the six episodes, just to push the story along, just to fill in maybe some of the blanks. I don't think they're meant to be a series because I don't see Hawkeye coming back. I don't see I hope Falcon and Winter Soldier comes back. Um, I don't see WandaVision, well, WandaVision yeah. is not going to come back. I don't, I don't see any of the short stories that they've had so far coming back, except for maybe Falcon and Winter Soldier. And, and Loki, yeah, love a guy. Don't bring back Loki. Confirmed. Yeah, I don't. I, I think Loki <laughs> got a season two. That's the thing. Yeah, Loki like, confirmed. I think, I think Loki got a season two, which I don't understand yeah. why <laughs> Falcon and Winter Soldier didn't get confirmed for a season two because I think out of all that, it was the better of all the series. Oh, because Falcon is yeah. getting the movie. It's Captain America Four. That's why. Yeah. So they're not you doing. Can, the, they're not doing the. Um. They're not you can do still. It. You can still bring that back because there's so much left of him and Bucky together yeah. that we just need to see. Then <laughs> getting his movie. Like, I don't understand. Like, you have a good formula. These two need to be together for a little while, especially with Cap gone. You need. I'd rather see them together. Yeah. Then to see them do like uh, a separate movie, or at least if you're going to do the Captain America movie, like Bucky better be in there, like 90% of the fucking movie. Yeah, yeah, he's, right. he, has to, he has to at this point. Yeah, like he, he's got to be there 90% of the movie. Like, like, honestly, I hope this is the last time we see Natasha's sister because she legitimately almost ruined the series for me. I don't I was just like, because I was like, first of all, here's my I was like, first, favorite part. <laughs> she was the part I hate because I was like, first of all, she's not funny. It was just like it was just like too much talking, too much jokes. The thing with her and Kate in the elevator, because like you said, she could have whooped Kate's ass. And I'm just like, if you're not gonna whoop your, if you're not gonna beat her ass because you feel bad, please don't comedically joke with her the entire time. I'm know, like, this is on. making it worse. You know what's better <laughs> than whipping somebody's ass and stealing that fear, knowing that you can whip their ass, and that's what I. Think yeah, but she, she didn't. But doing. she didn't do that. She joked with her the whole time. The conversation <laughs> they had at the table pissed me off because it went on for way too long. Yeah, and she tried. Yeah. It was almost like it was almost like before they got down to a serious conversation, the girl had to do a, a stand-up comedy scene for ten minutes, and then it's like after no one laughed, it's like okay, now let me talk to you about the actual plot. And I, I don't. Like, I, need, I, need, I need less of that. I need less of that. <laughs> and I think I think you you're not going to get your wish because the thing is oh, their biggest, their biggest plan is to do um the Dark Avengers, and unfortunately there is a Black Widow, so she's the one. She's going to be the one because she is getting recruited by uh, Marie Dreyfus to mm-hmm. and she's going to put together a new team, you know, and I think that's what brings the young Avengers out because they're going to put it together. So they're going to need a new Hawkeye. They're going to need a new um, Black Widow. You know, what's his name is going to be their Captain America. The U.S. Yeah, agent yeah. will be their yeah. Captain America. I don't think there was a Hawkeye, but what's what's really interesting to me to see is if they do the multiverse of madness, do we get a dark Wolverine? Because that was part of the Dark Avengers. You had his son Dakin take over as Wolverine on the Avengers, which, which kind of really made no sense, but I was just like, so you had an Avenger, and they actually, they had, and this is what we really good, they actually had Bullseye play Hawkeye. Like, he was the Dark Avengers Hawkeye, so we all know Bullseye didn't die in the uh, Daredevil series. He was just arrested, so could we get that coming out, which would be a good thing, but unfortunately, Gerard, I don't think you can get your wish with uh <laughs> And well, um, legit, legit, legitimate question to the panel, though. Hmm? If if the play was about how the Avengers saved New York, why was it called Rogers? I felt that was disrespect to the other five members of that team. Because well, it's, it's a real nice. play, right? But I wanted to shoot myself watching that. <laughs> no, <laughs> you know, I waited for like five eight. minutes, yeah. and I was like, I this was like the most excruciating, painful thing <laughs> I've ever gone through in my life. 
I didn't like it either, but I was like, why is it called Rogers? There's six of them. <laughs> I was like, that's flat out disrespect. Yo, there was a point where if I could say anything to Disney, the fact that you made this at the end of the credits and you put this in there, really, first of all, kudos to you because you left me on stuck because I'm trying to say, is there going to be a point to the end of this? But you showed me a Broadway play that there was, so you gave me a preview of a, a play I didn't have to pay for. Like that, that, that was your point. That, that was your gift on Christmas to me. This drawn out, <laughs> this drawn out play that I didn't care about. I was no- waiting for the stage to blow up. Yo, thank you. <laughs> like if I was Clint, I'd have walked out too. <laughs> like, so so I, I'm the only one that liked the play, huh? Wow. Yeah, yeah you, you don't. I, want- I'm biased. I don't really like musicals like that. Now I didn't like that musical. <laughs> like, yeah. God, so I'm a tolerate, I but that hilarious. I could not do. Like I, I saw I some I could do. Rogers. I thought I thought it was hilarious. And Jarrell, but well, once again, it's Christmas. That's, that's <laughs> anything wrong with this yeah, show. Sure. All you gotta just say it's a Christmas show, and that just mm-hmm. erases everything. It's like. Don't take this one seriously. Nah, you're not home alone in this, Justin. Like this is <laughs> there's a there's a point where like I am deep into giving Marvel shows the benefit of the doubt. And even this one, I didn't hate this. I also gave my review of the out of five stars. I gave it three stars, but it was a hard three. Like <laughs> we wanted to give it two and a half, maybe two. And it was like I had to really reach in to find elements to make me say. All right, I can deal with it. It was watchable, but the Christmas aspect of it, don't yeah, get a pass for it. Because that's the thing. Because like, if you remove all the all the BS, there was a good show in there somewhere, yeah. and I think that's why. Like, that's why. Like, I kind of liked it, or I stuck it out because I was just like, like you said, like Amaya, great. You know, like Clint. I mean, we don't need to be reminded he's old every five minutes, but Clint, great. Like a lot of the stuff were great. The action was great. Kingpin's back, but I'm just like. Y'all took something that could have been really good and y'all jumped all this BS on top of it that didn't need to be there. And we only got six episodes. And I'm going to be honest, I didn't know Clint was that fucked up. <laughs> like, I mean, I know he went through some shit, but I, my man is like held together by duct tape. Like, what? Is, why is he still fighting? Like, can somebody just retire this man? Can we get old man Hawkeye already with uh, just in a nursing home somewhere? That, that will probably happen eventually. But um, I think living, living with him is be, her, be, Kate living with him is extremely awkward. But go ahead. Before we head to the next uh, final topic, because that one's also going to be probably a, just a little bit lengthy because the other side is doing some questionable things that's pissing off a lot of people. I'm going to talk about that in a second. Any last words on Hawkeye before we head over to the <laughs> other side? Two and a half stars. That's it. Watchable, but you have to really just be. <laughs> it is. It is extremely Disney fied, as Nadia put it, and it is extremely. It is a show that you can sit down with your kids and go, "Hey, would you like the the most happy Disney part of Marvel? Let's watch Hawkeye." Yeah, that, that's how you get a billion dollars. Uh, yeah. The only thing I can say about Hawkeye was it was better than Wandavision and Loki. <laughs> so take that, take that, uh, take that for I, what it is. <laughs> I can't agree with you on that one. <laughs> it's the worst. Like, like, right. like, like, WandaVision still hurts my soul. <laughs> like, the, the fact that you said that makes me want to do a get out Jerome movie. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, like, uh, that might be a get out Jerome movie because, uh, yeah, yeah, like, me personally, no, I legit, honestly, honestly, though, I legit feel like Loki was the worst out of all the shows. I feel like it was. The that's, worst. A good that, that's, that's a good debate. That's a good debate. We'll we'll put a pin on that one. Yeah, we'll that's a good. See how Moonlight and the rest of them is going to do later this year, and then we'll, exactly. once they roll out a little bit more shows, we'll come back to it. But um, I'm just going to say this on that one, <laughs> folks. It was Christmas. They wanted they wanted they wanted something for you for the holidays. That's what y'all got. Never ever do another Christmas themed Marvel show. That's all I'm going to say. Nadia, what's your final thought? Like, you, you, you wrote a pretty good article on it. So what's your final? Yeah, that was a 6.5 for me. Like, make all the excuses you want. Like, they destroyed so many characters. Like, like <laughs> we can do a whole thing, like we said, as we always talk about, like, Marvel has a villain problem. Yeah. And these villains were not it. <laughs> yeah. But, oh, boy. Here we go. Okay. So on to the other side. The Flash is pissing more people off than Chester P. That's my one shot per episode. Um, put a trigger. Warning warning up for, um, you need to put a trigger warning up for Jarrell. <laughs> this, well, trigger warning for me because if these rumors are true, and this is from everybody, I mean, every this is you. This is part for probably the first time 
universally, I've seen a lot of just DC fans just universally say, you better not do this. And the rumors are going around with the flash. Um, this is a rumor mill. Take this with a grain of salt that the flash movie, of course, is going to do the reset of the DCEU. Um, but not only that, it's going to erase everything from Snyder and they're going to replace Superman with Supergirl being the only Kryptonian and they're going to replace Batman. That's why they have Michael Keaton there to pass the mantle to Batgirl in the HBO Max movie. And this has DC fans in an uproar and completely pissed off. And I'm going to first give my take on it. If you do this, you might as well just stop what you're doing and just build off of Matt Reeves' Batman because you just already fucked up. Um, because, first of all, erasing the Snyderverse is just stupid. Even, I don't care how, and, and this is because the execs don't like, I don't know what's going on, the execs don't like Snyder, or they just want to erase it completely. You erasing the Snyderverse is just stupid. If you're, especially if you're just establishing this, everything as a multiverse, it doesn't make sense. If that's the case, what was the whole point of this? Two, I understand that you're trying to push more female characters. We get it. And that's good. Representation, I'm all for that. But do not totally erase Henry Cavill. This man is hot right now. The man has the Witcher. The Witcher's hot right now. Everybody loves him as Superman. If you remove Henry Cavill from this shit, you are going to lose an entire fan base. That's number one. Two, Batgirl being the next Batman. When does she jump the Bat family hierarchy? And when, how's she jumping the mantle before Robin? Before Nightwing? Before Damian Wayne? Who, who told us she could jump the line? Number one, it's just like they have no direction whatsoever. I do not get this constant need of we need to erase Snyder. We need to erase Snyder. We need to erase Snyder. Oh, but it's a multiverse. Oh, calm down, everybody. It's a multiverse. If it's a multiverse, then leave Snyder shit alone. Do your playground here and call it a day. But it, it, it just doesn't make sense to me to try to erase something. You had the Justice League movie, the Snyderverse version, was a nice out. It was just a nice, it was not a nice out. It's a nice jumping point to where you can take the Flash movie from there. Because we already established that he can go back into time. You already have him established. Why would you use that to erase <clears throat> everything? It doesn't, it, it, it doesn't make sense. So I'm going to pass this to Sean first, and then we'll go to Nadia, then Jarrell. You can take it. So, Sean, you're up. So I hate to be the one to say I told you so. All right. I said this a year ago. Bury the Snyderverse. And I said this. Not because I hated Zack Snyder, I said bury it. Because if you keep listening to the fans and bring this back when you've tried to bury it, like bury the Snyderverse. No disrespect, fuck the fans, bury the Snyderverse. You're going to cause a problem. And they listened because they wanted a money grab and they decided, they decided, hey, we're gonna we're gonna do this, we're gonna do that. And I was like, yo, um, if you decide to go forward with this, then you better go with it full force, meaning it's going to be popular and you better continue from it. But of course, they here's something people didn't think about. They want to follow the Marvel formula as far as the toys are concerned, because they make a certain amount of movie money off the movies, but they make a buttload of money off the toys. And unfortunately, the Snyderverse could not bring the, the toy line in that they need. So the thing is, there was nothing about it that was like kid friendly or doing like you can take your looks from Spider-Man. You can take your looks from the Avengers movies. They're all toy friendly, even if they are serious content, even the WandaVision shows or the Disney shows, even if it's a, a very serious subject matter, you can kind of pull toys out of that. Everybody wants a Hawkeye bow and arrow right now. People want Falcons. Uh, wings or Winter Soldier's arm or, you know, you could do whatever you want with it. With Snyder Cut, you really couldn't bring a group of toys out for it, but that's still not here nor there. The thing is, like, 
you put this movie out and as somebody who said don't bring it out i watched it and i was just like yo this is really good this is probably what you should have started with maybe not the three hour version of it but you should have kept this in there if flash was a better character in this um uh, batman was a better everybody was the best version of that character and the hate that uh what's his name got for directing it nobody realizes this is what the executives told him to do it's not that he wanted to dismantle snyder's full cut this is what they they wanted him to make flash happy go lucky to sell toys they wanted them to make these basically as nadia put it they wanted to disney five the justice league and that's exactly what they did with uh what's what's his name that directed it uh josh whedon josh whedon what they did with the whedon cut they wanted it to be the most friendly thing in the world. And he took a lot of shit for it. And then once that happened, I said, do not release the Snyder Cut. Don't be stupid. <laughs> One of the biggest things I've said, and all of you heard me say it, mm-hmm. get rid of the Snyder Cut and concentrate on the villains. Redo everything. Let's make this instead of making it about dark side, because it's kind of like you're, you're cookie cutting what Marvel did with Thanos. Do you have the best villains like gallery of villains in any in comic book history make this about the legion of doom start building the legion of doom start doing movies where you're going to build the legion of doom you could even bring in joaquin Phoenix, joker whichever joker you want to you want to bring in uh what's his name's joker that's fine Jared Leto. Jared Leto's joker that's fine bring make this a legion of doom thing and take your rightful spot and give people something. But no, they went with the Snyder Cut. And now, now the executives are, we gave him his flowers. You saw the movie. Now we're going to get rid of it. And now we're going to take the Flash, use a Flashpoint reference, and destroy the whole thing. You're going to piss your fans off. Your fans are now like, oh, we can't get the rest of the Snyder Cut? Boo, I'm going to go over to Marvel. Because they seem to be consistent. Why are you doing this to yourself? Like, I don't know what the executive, whether they're drinking or smoking a lot of weed over there, or they're just like, high off something either you're gonna build with the snyder cut or scrap everything and make this about the villains keep the actors that you have there as many that want to stay and build it from there why burn this down why get rid of snyder like the stuff the snyderverse built which is really good just to tear it down and follow these new like social justice norms of now we got to make it a female character. Now we got to make this, uh, we got to turn this character into a black character. Now we got to do this. Just work with what you got and make it better. But no, they want to just constantly screw this up. And this is what's going to be the end of the DCU, these constant changes. Justin is right. Since when did Batgirl get the jump Dick Grayson? Like what, what crap are you on? When does, when does who, who else is taking over? Supergirl is uh, taking over, and this is not even um. Uh, this Supergirl is from the Injustice one. Yeah, um, yeah it's not Injustice. even Kara. Yeah, it's yeah. not even Kara. And so, it's just like you're killing off. And, it's, and my problem is, and I'll, and I'll pass it back to you. My problem is this: from a storyteller standpoint, you are not even establishing these characters to replace the mantle. Pat, make it a story. Like not to compare it to Marvel, but all these new characters that's coming in that's taking over have been passed down they have been established falcon becoming captain america was a natural progression they pass it down you just can't pass oh well we gotta get rid of henry cavill and uh he's doing this and this or we don't want them anymore all right flash come in we're going to just change the timeline up now she's going to be your new superman there's nothing the people are going to reject it you're already seeing pushback right now that's why there's rumors right now they're um, after the screening, they're going to do more reshoots again because of the backlash. It's just like, what are you doing? There's absolutely no direction whatsoever. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I get the fact that Flashpoint is a good way to erase everything because that's exactly what it did in the comic book, which is what the new DC 52 was. Flashpoint erases everything. You can start over. You can tell new stories, but tell new stories if we didn't like Henry Cavill. Tell new stories that we weren't all that. I mean, Ben Affleck grew on me and it, it, Ben Affleck became 50-50. Tell me new stories that Flash was just so trash that we couldn't deal with it. Or Gal Gadot's Wonder Woman was so bad, we don't like it. Tell me new stories with that. 
just say, okay, these guys did not work. We have to move on. Don't give me a four hour film that explains everything and makes a better reference to everything and makes the whole DCU make sense only to go. That was nice. We did it for the money grab. Now we're going to get rid of everybody. Ta-da. Here's the new Batgirl. Why do I care? Here's the new super Supergirl instead of Superman. Why do I care? Like it is just you're just destroying it. If you're going to destroy, if you're going to rebuild, wreck everything and start over. That's it. Start over. Matter of fact, start over. And like I said, bring it to the Legion of Doom. That way you wait. Like, here's the thing. Since we're not going to get Ben Affleck's Batman. So that means we don't get De- uh, Deathstroke either. Nope. That means we don't like you build all of this dude being Deathstroke and we don't get him either. We got Lex Luthor. That was pretty good. Some people liked him. Some didn't. But he's bringing together says it at the end let's start a league of our own and he's gone so now you have all these main characters so what's superman gonna die of boredom like like what the what contracts <laughs> yeah like what do you do are you pissed because he's gotten so popular as the witch that's not bless you that's not his fault that they actually wrote a decent story and he's good at it like Come on, people. I'm, I'm going to let y'all pass this. I don't know what DC is doing, but this is a fuck up on their part, royally. Well, like, keep in mind, folks, it's just a rumor, but if this is true, then, like, because I know Dwayne Johnson is fighting hard to get this, his uh, Superman, him versus fight. Superman. Um, and, I mean, it, it, for me, it's just like the problem with DC is just this lack of direction. If you're really going to go with the multiverse, like the whole point of Michael Keaton being there because Ben Affleck is no longer going to be Batman. He publicly said it that uh, I think two days ago. He said the Flash is his swan song. That's it. And Michael Keaton's going to be taking over and he's going to be serving as kind of like the Nick Fury or the mentor to all these new heroes. So Michael Keaton's going to be kind of this new DCU's Batman, the older Batman, and the Batgirl movie was originally going to be Batman Beyond, but they're going to take kind of the concept of Batman Beyond and have Barbara Gordon, who is Officer Barbara Gordon in this, and she's going to be taking the mantle of the Batman and, you know, just being the head uh, Bat in this universe's uh, DC, and it's just like, so where's Robin? You better explain what happened to Dick Grayson, Jason Todd, Tim Drake, like where are they, or or they just don't exist? And if they don't exist, then automatic trash already. But I said my piece. Well, Nani, what do you think about this this news or just rumors? Throw them all in the trash. Like I, I I'm just so over DC. Like they give me so much like anger. <laughs> like it's just it's just they don't know what they're doing. Essentially, like, I feel like it's just a bunch of corporate people in a boardroom that never picked up a book in their life that are just like not letting people do their job. I'm just, I don't even know. Like I, I, when I, when I saw the, the what's a uh, Grace Rudolph thing, I was like, man, I pray this is not true. Like all of this has to be complete bullshit. Like, please, like they don't know what they're doing. The birds of prey movie was like decent. It was entertaining. It was fun, whatever. But what is that the route they're trying to take now with this whole like movement whatever you want to call it I just I think they're a complete mess honestly DC always tries like too hard to compete with Marvel and they just end up biting themselves in the ass I think they could have actually had competition with Marvel had they kept Snyder Cut and kept all those uh things that they had visioned because it would have actually essentially been like the MCU. It could have been, it had the potential. Shazam was super popular. We're getting Black Adam. Yep. Um, the Wonder Woman, the first movie was good. The second one was garbage, but okay, we still love Gal. But um, uh, what else? Uh, Aquaman was great. Like, I feel like they all, they essentially had a universe. And then with the Flash, like when they were talk- first talking about Flash, I thought we were going to get like a paradox and I thought we were going to get Thomas Wayne. So I thought we could have gotten Jeffrey Dean Morgan and then just literally tie all these universes together. We could have finally brought in the Green Lantern. Like it's just, they're a mess. And it's really upsetting. Like if they have all this beef with Ben and and Cavill, like maybe just recast Batman and Superman. Like, I mean, I don't want that to happen. That hurts my soul. Like I want those two back. 
but maybe just do that. But whatever they're doing now is makes no sense. Like that's basically trying to make, you can't even get the big three, right? This is what I always say. You can't, you have to get Wonder Woman, Batman and Superman right first. Then you can start doing other things. If you can't even get those three right, what are you doing? And then I think I like what Justin said, like essentially uh, with the, the Batman movie, the Matt Reeves movie, maybe just build a universe around that because like the solo movies are doing good. Joaquin Phoenix's movie was great. Um, the Batman I think is gonna be phenomenal because they're going the detective route. So maybe build a whole new universe, but we need fucking Bruce Wayne. <laughs> <laughs> yes, like the, uh, um, just to piggyback off of that before I pass it to Chester P. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry, my man sorry. Diggle is never gonna put that ring on, boy. <laughs> but uh, don't worry, Jarrell, you go, you about to get the Whole mic. Episode in itself. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I think DC. I said this before, but I, I agree with Nadia. DC is strongest when they have, like, you can tell just looking at the Batman. I mean, the movie comes out in two months, but. You can tell the man has a clear vision of what story he wants to tell for the Batman. Now, the problem is, and, and this is, I think a lot of this DC's problem is studio interference. Like you have a lot of corporate people who absolutely have no idea. And I think Sean said this a long time ago. They need someone who's like a Kevin Feige. Like that's what I always said. Why don't you just get Bruce Tim? who was responsible for Batman anime series, the Justice League series. Like, what's wrong with getting those people from the animation department and having them run, write the stories or at least give final input or creative input on what you should do? Because those series, those anime series are gold. The DC animation films are gold. Uh, Young Young Justice, well, this this season's okay, but Young Justice is gold. Uh, I mean, we're going to have to okay. put a pin in because the, the, yeah, yeah. this season of Young Justice will put a pin on it, but a yeah. for later, right? <laughs> this season for me personally, it's, it's okay. CW Arrowverse, I have my issues with it, but what they did was freaking amazing. God, put, God give them credit with his due. Mine is Chester P. It was amazing. But Jarrell, you, I'm going to uh, uh, put you on the floor. What do you think about these rumors? Good move to erase Snyderverse. Yes, no, maybe so. And your love for Chester P, I will never understand. That is it. <laughs> I'm still waiting for that episode. Um, I'm actually glad you said that because we we honestly we we need to clarify this. Like when when we're talking, like when we use terms like DC's problem, we need to make it clear we're talking about the movie section of the studio and not DC as a whole. Because We've, yeah. like you said, like we we've had <laughs> conversations about their about their animated universe that ended, you know, really cool with um with the apocalypse war. You know, despite how, like you said, despite how some of y'all feel about the Arrowverse, the Arrowverse is very popular, and they actually had a plan and put together a six episode crisis event that they built to over the course of ten years. You know, we've never actually had conversations about like Marvel animated stuff, so we know the where they're. <laughs> yeah, that, that's what I'm saying. So it's like. So it's like so when people be like, "Oh, DC sucks," it's like, make sure make sure you make sure you clarify the what DCU. you're talking about when you say the that. DC. <laughs> like when you say that. Right. So, I, I mean, I'm I'm disappointed because it's you know because I'm the one that always said like you know like they had a an executive problem, but it, I don't think like we're at a point now where I don't think it's them not knowing what they're doing. It's more like childish antics like we're in high school now whereas like for some reason someone that sits at that round table has a problem with Zack Snyder and then now he's just like oh you know I'm gonna blow up the whole thing now because I don't like you for whatever reason and everyone else is allowing him to sacrifice the bigger picture for his petty <laughs> you know, like, just so he can get you know he can get his petty revenge but, but I mean, also on that sorry to cut you off also that Zack Snyder wants to walk away it's not just that well, yeah, because he doesn't want to deal with them. He, he wants to walk <laughs> from it too. You know? He's doing that Netflix money now. He's doing another movie for Netflix, yeah. a sci-fi film. So yeah, and I mean, and if, and if that's back. the case, but, but see, but if that's the case, there was a way for there was a way for him to walk away without making it look like, like you know, like like they were about to meet it at the back of a high school at three o'clock. <laughs> you know, because now like the whole because now like the whole thing is just a mess. I mean, I agree with Nadia. It's like at the end of the day, 
you sh- if you couldn't work out contracts with Henry Cavill and if and if you know if Ben Affleck was upset because you didn't want him to do his Deathstroke movie then you should have just recast him and moved on because Aquaman made a billion dollars people forget that you know like mm-hmm. everybody like Shaz- Shazam is DC's Marvel film you know like every- everybody likes Wonder Woman so the universe is already built so technically speaking even if you use the flash you can't start over because you can't start over because there's still a Wonder Woman 3 there's still an Aquaman 2 and there's still Shazam, Fury of the Gods, and <laughs> there's still Black Adam. Like these movies exist in a specific time, in a, in a specific time frame. The only thing they can do with the Flash movie, because since there's two Flashes, because there were two Ezra Millers in the trailer, if you take the long-haired Ezra Miller and put the Supergirl and the Black Bat Girl and all that stuff with him, and let the short-haired Ezra Miller continue with everybody else, that would be a that would be a good way for them to salvage it. Because I don't understand the point of why there are two two flashes in the movie anyway. Because if you're going to do that, you should have brought in Grant Gustin. But unless that is a placeholder for Grant Gustin, yeah, yeah. I mean, we all know he's going to be in it. But I don't, I don't like it. Not so much because it's a bad idea or it's poor representation. I don't like where the idea came from. It's not like somebody legitimately sat down and said, hey, this should be a good idea. It's more like, fine, Henry Cavill, you don't want to be Superman, but we'll do Supergirl. And I'm just like, oh, God. <laughs> because it's like now you're making, because it's like now, like you said, for all the people who like him, they're going to take it out on her. Now. Yeah, it was your mic. I was about to say. <laughs> I said, you, you got mad? Uh, not a mic. Yeah, you got mad. Your mic is going crazy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, that's, but that's the thing. It's like now, now people people are going to take it out on Supergirl because they want to see Henry Cavill. People aren't going to embrace, you know, Batgirl now. And no, you're that, getting that really sense. taken over by the Decepticons right now. <laughs> <laughs> like your voice sounds straight up autobiographic. <laughs> Wow. You've gotten so you gotten so mad you switched over from the DC universe to the Transformers universe. And just like yo, like I'm, I'm done with this Wait, shit. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Yeah. Good. yeah. Good. No, I mean I'm not I'm not done with it because I watch I watched I watched the the panel at DC fandom. I actually I'm actually excited for the Batgirl film. I'm excited for the Blue Beetle film. Like I want to see the static film because Milestone Universe said they they bring everybody back. I'm excited for that, but I just don't like how we're going to get it because it's because like we're, we're not getting it in a positive way. We're getting it based out of like pettiness and like revenge and the characters are the ones that are going to end up suffering. But and but actors at, too, unfortunately, but, because there's nothing yeah. like uh, that's because you know, the actors, I, I feel sorry for her because yeah. you, the fans is just going to reject because they're going to see these poor women as, oh, you're replacing. Yeah, that's, the, that's the, you're that's, replacing yeah. Superman. We're not going to support you. You know, like, that's the problem. It's like, and even, even like Henry Cavill could come out and be like, yeah, I just don't want to do Superman anymore because it, because, but people are going to ignore that because it looks like the studio got rid of him. You know, like the, you to know, be honest it, with you, I don't, I don't think it's that he doesn't want to do it. He's, you know, like the witch. No, I'm just saying as an example, like, even if he, even if he said that, it still looks like the studio kicked him out. Got rid of, yeah. <laughs> the Witcher is popular. I think he has a couple other projects and he just don't want to work with him to sit down and say, okay, like I have to, you know, do this, like sit down and work with him or whatever he has to do. It's, it's, I mean, it's pride. It's, it's, it's a pride thing. Even Hamada, when Hamada took, that's the dude named Hamada, right? Walter Hamada. Yeah. Yeah. When, when he took over, he was just like, oh, like I have my vision for where I want this to go. But they were like, bro, we already got a vision right in front of your face. (laughs) You know, and he didn't, he didn't want it. And he didn't, he didn't want to take it. You know, it's like it's just it's just just like just like with Star Wars, the second Star Wars film should have been a layup, you know, because the Force mm-hmm. Awakens laid the groundwork. All you had to do was follow the Force Awakens. And the second person came in was just like, yeah, <laughs> we're going to we're going to do something else. The less and, we t- mentioned the last Jedi be better. <laughs> the last Jedi. Oh. Then we got the Rise of Skywalker. I'm going to do a Star Wars episode one day because I got to air. I got to go see him punk on that shit. But. <laughs> I mean, but yeah. but to, to, but to answer your question, I do not think it's not that I don't think it won't work. It's just stupid. It's stupid. It's not stupid to bring in a Supergirl. It's not stupid to bring in a Batgirl. It's not stupid to focus on them. It is stupid to tell people they're going to be your new Trinity. That's, that's stupid. That's <laughs> you nailed it. 
That's like right you could have just, the, you could have right just, there. yeah, you could have just brought them in and just not said anything, and everybody be like, "Oh, cool, Supergirl's here. Oh, we get a bad girl." Don't tell me, well, they're in charge now. Then it's like, wait, hold up. <laughs> like, nah, we we we. Ain't doing you know, somebody's gonna come on and be like, "Oh, so we just affirmative action making, <laughs> making new new characters go over there, so it's no longer gonna be Trinity. We are gonna have like who who would be so." We got Wonder girl. Woman, Batgirl, we got Supergirl. Girl. So we got the holy trinity of three women. I don't have a problem with it. Yeah, I don't have a problem with it either. But I don't if, like how we're I don't like how we're getting there. If you're bringing it out, and I mean, there's definitely a world for it. I mean, look at at one point of what Marvel's doing. They gave you a slight preview and end game of them bringing a Force, which is an all females Avenger thing. But you organically said, okay, we're going to show all these women on the screen. How did everybody like it? Oh, that looks cool. All right, you didn't show me on the screen Batgirl, Supergirl, and everybody coming in, which I have no problem with them. But do I personally think they could carry the trinity of them together? No. And that see, and like I said, you just you just said I have no problem with it. But once we start talking trinity nonsense, that's when I'm like, hold up. <laughs> because if y'all want if they wanted to do an all female based thing, that was another layup. You have Wonder Woman for Christ's sake. You do a movie where there's something wrong with the mascara. Wonder Woman has to go save the Amazons, but because men aren't allowed on the island, she you wrote she a perfect recru- plot. I remember yeah, you she before. yeah she ends up recruiting the female superheroes because she can't bring the men to the island. You bring you know you could even you could even have Harley go with her just for you know just for fun. Well, actually, you can you you really can't say that because wasn't Trevor on the island for a little bit? Like yeah, you can't. Yeah, but he, no. No, but he found no. He found he, that was an accident. I'm talking about her actively bringing yeah, men to the like, island. You can't like, bring you can't bring men. You shouldn't yeah, bring men. Yeah, you shouldn't. They but they, it, you know, they but don't have it like the comic book where they are absolutely forbidden to come on there. Like I'm pretty sure it's like yeah, you can come on there. But if they came, but you are absolutely right. Yeah, because all, all she had all she had to say all they all they had to say was hey, listen, do you need help? And she's like, no, men are forbidden. And then he's like, all right, well, let me call Barbara, then she can go with you. Supergirl can go with you. Black Canary can go with you. There are so many women that could have gone with her to this island. <laughs> like we don't need, we don't, we don't need a new Trinity. We have a Trinity. Jarrell, yeah. if they use your plot, sue. So. <laughs> <laughs> but they, they won't use it because somebody like, it's gonna gonna it and, and call it call it bullshit. That's what it is. Yeah, but, and, and that's another thing. It's like they don't even have to try hard because they've already introduced a bunch of female characters. You know, like the, I said, send the, Harley with her. <laughs> send the whole birds of prey with her. You can send so many people with her. Like that's that that's another layup. But but honestly, I don't. I also don't think I don't think this all female training thing is going to last anyway because the screenings. This, they said they already did screenings for it, and if they're doing reshoots, they already know that it's not really going to go over too well. Mm-hmm. And if and if they're trying to sell it, and because you said before they're trying to sell anyway, I think the people that they're trying to sell to, well, they, they have because But see, but this. But this, this is another thing because now we got another group of people with their own direction on where they want to yeah. take things. But at some point, someone is going to buy this property and they're going to bring, they're either going to bring back the Snyderverse or, like you said, they're just going to blow it up and start well, all over. Well, well, there's well, is, that, they're not selling the DCU, they're selling just CW. Yeah, that's going to be the, uh, I was going to actually transition to that. Um, just hold that thought real quick. There's rumors going around that Warner Brothers, Warner Brothers Discovery, you know, who's going to be taking over, wants the Snyderverse. So yeah. what's happening is most of these people, this is just all rumors, people, that the people who are in charge of DC now, they know they're on their way out. So because, you know, usually when a, a takeover happens, they bring their own people and, you know, personnel, those people get fired. So these people already know they're about to be on their way out. So they're just like, yo, let's fuck it up as much as possible. Let's do what we wanted to do. Was point to beyond, but not saying self-sabotage, but I'm just saying, like, let's do our vision quickly before the, yeah. you know, the yeah. take goes over and they just bring, you know, but then again, once again, it's back to no direction. It's too many. It's, it's on this corporate level, which is the real issue. There's too many wheels, too many cooks in the kitchen, which transitions to what's happening now. With a possible, we don't know, CW apparently, it was recently reported that Warner Brothers and Viacom CBS, who are both co-owners of CW, I, I didn't realize Viacom was, but then again, that explains Supergirl going to the CW. Um they are looking to sell the CW because apparently the CW hasn't been making money or hasn't been profitable since Arrow season one or season two. 
So they've been pretty much losing money on the CW. So a lot of people are thinking that this is going to be the end of the Arrowverse. I personally think this is a blessing in disguise, not because of I don't want to see the Arrowverse live. No, I want the Arrowverse to live. I just want the Arrowverse to go to HBO Max where they have a better budget and God willing, better writers. So <laughs> go back to season one writers, please. <laughs> yes. That's what I'm hoping for that they get a bigger budget. Cause it seems like in Jarrell, you, you, you watch it more than us. I think you can even admit when it comes to at least the special effects. Is it me? Is it just me or make, correct me if I'm wrong. Is it me or is the special effects getting worse compared to the initial earlier seasons? Like they get, keep getting their budget cut each season. They keep going. <laughs> I mean, it, it's funny because, and I, and I joke about this all the time when I do reviews, the biggest, now, now when you say, and again, when you say they're selling the CW, you're talking about the entire CW, not just talking about the Arrowverse specifically. We're talking the, about the, like- the entire CW. Yeah, yeah, we're, talk, we're talking about vi- Vampire Girl Diaries and all that other, like yeah. Jane the Virgin. And all, like, don't, don't just make it seem like, oh, we selling the Arrowverse. Yeah, that, I, I don't <laughs> think our viewers give a damn about Jane the Virgin or Vampire Diaries. And if you do, just, I apologize. No, because you, you were just like, oh, they losing money. Don't blame that on the Arrowverse. No, no, no. <laughs> so, I'm not just saying no, but, the Arrowverse but, was profitable. Yeah, but it was just like they didn't apparently they haven't really made much. And I think that's why you're starting to see the quality of the shows and the special effects. Everything is starting to dip now because they are losing money. And that's why I guess yeah, what they're, what they're doing come is, in and yeah. finance some of the Arrowverse shows. Like what, what, what they're doing is you can tell you can tell the budget got cut because they're coming up with ways now to incapacitate certain people like Batwing, for instance, on Batwoman, he has the full Batwing costume. He flies, he has gadgets and the whole thing. Like he's Batwing. In the last episode, he got shot in the shoulder. And now because he got shot, he's just like, he literally said, well, damn, I can't suit up for a while. And I'm like, oh, okay, we ain't got the money for that then. <laughs> so that's what, that, that, that's how, the, but then, but then in like the last three episodes, he's going to be shooting rockets out of the back, you know, like out of the back of it, because they're saving all the money for like the season finale. So yeah, no, that, that, that is, a, that is a problem, but the, the, the saving grace for that though, whenever an Arrowverse TV show is finished, all the seasons go to Netflix, except for Superman and Lois, Batwoman and Stargirl. Oh, they all go to HBO. Up, though. They're all going to go to uh, HBO Max soon. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like H- HBO Max already has the rights to three of the Arrowverse shows. Yeah. So why would they not go after the other four? And okay. once they pull it, once they pull in the other four, like you said, then we'll 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 get shorter seasons. We'll probably get 13 episode seasons. Which and be way better. There'll be more money. Yeah, yeah, which which will be better. There'll be more money in the budget. And it'll look because because Superman and Lois does not look like the CW side shot that shit. No, <laughs> like Su- Swamp Thing didn't look. Swamp Thing didn't look like that. Like Swamp Thing and Superman and Lois looked like they shot it on HBO Max and just put it on the CW just to have just so they'll have something to air. Yeah, that's 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 exactly what it was. <laughs> First of all, the problem with the CW is the Legends of Tomorrow should have ended five seasons ago, and they keep they keep dragging that toilet water <laughs> show through. They keep coming up with shit to keep it going, yet. You couldn't figure out how to make the actors on Black Lightning happy, which was probably yeah. one of your more popular shows that had a better storyline. And I wasn't happy with everything group Black Lightning did. Everybody, but everybody liked Black. Like out of out of all the shows, like the when, once Arrow ended, everybody was like Black Lightning. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's the thing. Ninety percent of Black Lightning, except for a few episodes, was on point. The problem is Black Lightning started to really CW it up. Like, first of all, Painkiller should have never even got a look to get a show. It was just a, a complete miss. Honestly, honestly, they focused on him because he was eye candy for the women. But that's a CW. That's a CW thing. Because <laughs> every time he every time he got into a fight, he always took his shirt off before he beat somebody up. <laughs> Like the biggest problem is you took a trash concept and really ran with it. Like instead of focusing on making the actors on Black Lightning, you were just like, and I hate to say it, DC got its normal, we don't care what Black shows do moments and then sat down and let Black Lightning go to the wayside. But you keep feeding money into that, into into Legends of Tomorrow. (laughs) First of all, Legends of Tomorrow should have been canceled as soon as they did Puppets of Tomorrow. Like they, somebody should have went in there, looked right at the producer, slapped the shit out of them, be like this ain't <laughs> this season. Like the minute this season ends, like you took, a, and I was giving it a chance. You took a really good episode with Constantine. 
a really good season with Constantine, made a really good effort to make this like something that could possibly bring Legends of Tomorrow back. And you just kept every retarded idea. I do apologize. Shouldn't say that. (laughs) Every stupid idea they can find and put it together in that Legends of Tomorrow should have ended. There's a lot like Flash is starting to get to that point of Flash needs to end quickly. Um, like really? I know, but, 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 he, but he has the gold boots. Oh, who cares? Like <laughs> I will say this also. I know you like this Bat Woman who had yeah. who has been <laughs> don't do that. dying in the ratings year every year, and it's been a proven fact. You can look up the numbers. Bat Woman has been on the decline since season one badly you need this is where you did the hell you're gonna die on you gonna keep this going like batwoman should have died legend of tomorrow should die the cw arrowverse should have just consisted of black lightning flash and that's it for right now until you come up with something better other than that you don't don't like star girl no star girl we see star girl's hbo max true yeah even though star girl has had a pretty good storyline this year and you can start to see it kind of started falling off since season one. Like whoever was writing season one was on point with a lot of stuff they were doing. And although she was annoying with the star girl, oh, I'm, I'm the new star. Girl, it it kind of was endearing. Like I could kind of see like, oh, this poor girl just really doesn't understand. Like she <laughs> got this by accident, but good for her. She wants justice. And I can, I can get it. And the characters were pretty good and complex. This season, they did keep the way the characters are going. She got a little more annoying, right? Where I was just like, if somebody does not slap this child and sit her down and relax her, like, I'm going to really shut this off. But it got really good as it's going on. So you can see Stargirl is progressing. And you hope that it's progressing to more of they become more adultish. The situations get a little harder. It gets a little more serious. But it has so much potential to move up. The the only way this is gonna mess up is if they mess it up. But other than other than that, CW needs to get rid of a lot of shows and just start over. Y'all are absolutely right. This needs to go to HBO Max and stay there. I, I'm gonna just say my <laughs> last piece on this um because we're running out of time. I want just want to say I I I don't hate the CW people. I know people think like, oh my god, you hate the CW. I do not hate the CW. I don't like the CW writers because I do not know what the, they be writing. I don't think a lot of these people ever picked up a comic book. Um, a lot of this shit, and I think the biggest complaint a lot of people have with the Arrowverse is that it feels too soap opery. It feels like a soap opera at times. Um, I think we could look at that from, and it's and and it, and truthfully, it's not the actors' fault. I really believe it's most of these people casting. They're good actors because if you see them in other projects outside of this. They're freaking amazing. They really are good actors. It's the shade writing. was perfect casting. Who, who, did you just say Chester P was perfect casting? I said the shade. Oh, about to say I was like, yo, you gotta get out. Like, yo, you're gonna be banned from the show if you said Chester P is perfect casting. <laughs> um, um, but my thing is this: they need better writers. They need a better, a fair budget. The same budget you gave Superman and Lois. The same budget you give to Titans. The same budget you give to Swamp Thing. Give it to the Arrowverse, and you see, and you're gonna see a major difference. If you give those people a budget, give them some competent writers, people who actually know shit, and stop doing everything lovey dovey. I don't need Flash crying almost every episode. I don't need, I don't need the soap opera drama. I don't need. I want my Flash to be Flash. I and. and and, and get rid of the team shit. I'm sick of the. I stopped the, watching. I think that episode. Yeah, with team Flash. Uh, the team Flash. <laughs> the team Arrow. Team Black Lightning. I, I've never seen so much superheroes that have so much of a support system, like Titans. Everybody been sense. through that Lazarus pit. <laughs> yeah, Titans. Yeah. It makes sense. They're a team. Okay, Doom Patrol makes sense. They're a team. Superman and Lois. Superman by himself. You most of the time. You don't. Yeah, Lois assists with certain things. John, well, you know, got, the kids uh, help, got, but you don't got see. Steel. He got steel teaming with him now. I mean, if you well, thank God it's not Shaq. That's all we gotta say, right? Thank God they, <laughs> thank, thank God they didn't cast Shaq. Much better <laughs> at, at steel. All right, all right. I'm just gonna put it that way. But we don't need Barry Allen is smart enough as it is. We don't need Cisco to solve and Caitlin to solve every single problem. 
That's like that's like having that's like I can imagine because the next CW show, if it gets sold or not, is gonna be it's Gotham Knights. They're doing Gotham Knights next. That's the next. No, it's CW Naomi. Show. They're doing they're doing Naomi next. Well, no, no. I mean, I mean, like the next one that's oh. supposed to be in line for the Bat series is gonna be Gotham Knights, which is supposed to be Batgirl. Um, I forgot who else is gonna be in there, and it's the same people behind Batwoman writing this shit. So you can imagine you can what that. type of shit's gonna be there. <laughs> So, I couldn't get through Batwoman back when it was Ruby Rose episode two. I was just like, we get it. You're a lesbian. Woman power. <laughs> I can't take yeah. it. Like, yeah, they, 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 they pump, yeah, they, they pump that in. They pump the lesbian thing in hard. With, uh, with yeah, yeah, like, let it be natural. It's yeah, that, ridiculous. That is, she, now he's 100%. This is the problem. CW has a... The problem with the Arrowverse is not the actors. It's the production budget. And it's the writers. Because... They got it. I don't know. Like I said, I don't know who they got for this shit, but they need a clean slate. Like, put them on HBO Max. Let the people behind who's doing Titans. Titans is great. Season three was freaking awesome. First of all, Titans started out weak and then got so much stronger after each season. You're telling me you can't find somebody to do that? Like, trust me, I told you, people were ready to walk out of Titans after the second episode. And I said, no, give it a chance because this is HBO Max's first. This is actually it was just dc it was their first foray into this and then like i said third and fourth it just got so much better season two yo i don't know who was writing it but they wrote gold season three the same thing you were just like yo i can't believe that this started out like this which gives a good a good point to don't write anything off until you see the first season the same thing with doom patrol doom patrol starts off very strong. It kind of like waned a little bit this, but I was just like, I still enjoy every episode of Doom Patrol. What they're doing with everything else is like, yeah, yeah it's okay. Well, like, well, like you said, I mean, even with the, um, with the Crisis crossover, it was six episodes of no relationship bullshit. It was six episodes of the Monitor is trying to destroy the multiverse and everybody got down to business. That's why people liked it so much. <laughs> Was even that was even weak. Like it was good, but it was that was weak to you. Yeah, no, no, no. But it's but you can look up the fan reaction to it. It was good, but it didn't get the reaction they wanted. Like a lot of people criticized the hell out of it. Like it was just like, oh, whoop the so so Arrow became the catalyst for everything. Like this is how um, what do you call it? He goes out like he's the catalyst for everything. Like it wasn't that it was bad. It was just that. Did I like if you ask me, did I think about it as much as I thought about the um, what the crisis on infinite earths where they had the different superheroes? I enjoyed that so much more than I did the whole crisis on on what do you call the whole crisis thing? Because it's just like, okay, you guys started out with a with it really good, and now it's like this didn't really end the way I thought it would end, and it doesn't mean it was bad. No, it was it was a bad it wasn't terrible to me. I'm not gonna praise it and say, oh, I thought this was good. Let's just say it's the least watched series crossover and, that I want to watch out of all of them. And and the last thing I'll say is just to piggyback off of that, unfortunately, and this is not this is nothing against the uh, this is once again corporations that in the fear of it, I mean, you set up at the end of Crisis the Justice League, you know, black black lightning, supergirl, but they're gone now. It is just like, what the hell? I mean, granted, Splash, you know, try to recoup that with his yeah, recent yeah. five art crossover. Yeah, but, with his Armageddon. And, yeah, with Armageddon, but it's just like, how many times? And I love the reverse Flash, but Flash got other role gallery. How many times are we gonna keep going back to Tom and letting him kill it every single time? But it's just like, yo, you got the flat. It's the it's the Flash. Like, unless DC said you can't use this role gallery, you can't use his role galleries. What is the point of having a Flash show? Like you have, oh. they have not used Flash's no, right. villains well at the, all. The way Nadia looks sitting in that chair is how I feel about the CW Arrowverse right now. <laughs> like I don't care. I stopped like, watching like six years ago, so I can't like, really comment. It's to the point where if somebody came to me and was like, "Yo, they just didn't give the Flash an ending, and they just cut all the shows." And unfortunately, everybody is out of work. I'd feel bad for the actors out of work, but I wouldn't feel bad that they ended it. Like, I'd be like, ended it however they, whether they just stopped making it, I wouldn't feel bad. I would probably just 
no. go watch like the first four seasons of the flash the first four seasons of arrow and all of black lightning and then just say okay i'm i'm good maybe i might even watch the first two seasons of legends of tomorrow but other than that i'll be like i don't care about the rest no, of it it's not that it's bad it's just like right now for me it's just like the reason why i stopped watching it is because one the budget two i think the writing quality went down and it's just like it, 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 it's they kind of especially with the flash with my problem with that season is like it kind of they don't know i mean we finally got the boots yes that's good and all but and armageddon was okay but it's kind of like still it's like okay so what are we going to do afterwards it's like you kind of you got to kind of like sean said it's kind of time to put the flash to bed and if you want to start over put them on the max you know let it continue over there you know I'm not saying recast keep grant gustin but let grant be grant like let him be more of the flash and you can have the same people come in, pop in one all the time, but get rid of the team shit. Let him have, you know, let let Iris be pregnant and everything else and still have the kids, have the twins through a series. And, you know, just let her be pregnant Steven in the kitchen, Amell. huh, Justin? <laughs> you know, bring back Stephen and Bell. pregnant. <laughs> huh? Yeah, really kind of pretty in the corner. They're right. Just let her be barefoot and pregnant in the corner, right? Like, like <laughs> Oh, my God. They're going to cancel me for that. Anyway, but, but you get you, you get my gist. For me, it's for it's CW gets sold. I just hope that the rights go back to H. The rights HBO yeah. Max gets the rights to the DC TV shows. Warner Brothers is like, okay, you get we're selling the CW, but you can't air anything DC. We're gonna put it on HBO Max so we can get the subscribers. That's my biggest hope because that mm-hmm. would mean a bigger budget. Continue the hour versus it is. Just get better writers for the love of God. Get um get them a Bring bigger, back small bigger thing. Yeah, give them a bigger budget and let the shit go. And you then, if anything, you can use the TV shows to save the movies and pick me back off of that shit, you know, and do it that way. Because DC has always been strong with TV and animation. There's nothing wrong with you connecting an animation film and transferring it to live action. What if is the big example? Then did the Doctor Strange show up in the trailer? So, I mean... That evil Doctor Strange, then he come from what if and go to the live action. So it's possible you can. What's wrong with setting up things live action? They did it with the Vixen cartoon, did they not? The Vixen yeah. cartoon, and she showed up in the Arrow live version. So what's wrong with using animation as well? So but that is my no. piece for this. Anyone has any last words before we head out? I think we spent way too much time on the CW on this one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Ways not, of, Jarell, not, that, not that not that it's not interesting for your taste, Jarrell, but we spent way too much. Like the I don't DC- like I don't like the CW. Like the <laughs> Arrowverse people. I'm a fan of the Arrowverse. <laughs> I've never heard Jarrell talk about. Man, did y'all see Riverdale? Yes. <laughs> yeah, and the sad thing is, Riverdale is actually fucking good, yo. It was like, good the first re- season. Yeah, like, yeah. I don't, and then I don't once review. again, same as every other show on the CW, I was like, yeah. what are y'all doing? Y'all, like, the writers I, are just like on crack. Yeah, I hate to tell you, Joel, you kind of missed out. Like, Riverdale was actually right. <laughs> really Riverdale good. was better than like the later seasons of The Flash. Honestly. I, I should have said the, the originals. <laughs> Joel be like, yo, did y'all see the originals? <laughs> Or or the but Vampire now, Diaries. We'll I, don't know. Get I stopped watching that years ago. Too. Yeah, you gotta understand, like shows like the One Hundred was actually good. Like the first Ooh. four. Seasons. Yeah, One Hundred was good. I love the One Hundred. Yeah, there are a lot of shows that were good. They just like somehow they were just like yo. The the writers were like, hey, listen, I've made my mark here. Give it to the intern. Like in the intern. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, not to sound like whatever biased. I'm probably gonna get canceled for this. But I feel like now film has become like the NYU generation. Like it's like the like rich kids that went to like the like, you know, the famous film school, but don't have talent. Not all of them, yeah. but I'm Place just saying a lot of them. Yeah. Hold on. Place that cat gently. There's a lot of people getting canceled for throwing their cats. <laughs> <laughs> I'm laughing because yeah, they animal abuse. Yeah, I'm like, yo, what? <laughs> No, I was gonna say, right, say Jarrell, put that right. cat down gently. I was looking, I was like, oh shit, is he gonna throw it? <laughs> I'm not gonna throw my cat. Right. Yo, you're right. The NYU, and I can't blame it on NYU because that's like a disservice. It's just an, an example, like, a, I'm just, I don't know how to call it. Yeah, no, because no, 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 you're, you're absolutely right. NYU is a perfect example. There's <laughs> a lot of NYU students that'll probably come out and make like an award winning film. 
I think it's just the, this is the generation of everybody has to be socially conscious. Everything has to be included. And there's no way, there's no wiggle room. Like they're trying to erase the old regime and they're not going about it the right way. They're going about it with a hammer instead of gently like smoothing everything over so we transition into it. So instead of having shows where we can see the slow transition of maybe a female character, maybe a female character of a different ethnicity or a character of a different ethnicity, period. We're just coming in like, change it, change it, hammer it out. You deal with it. If you don't like it, then that means you're racist and you're this phobic, that <laughs> phobic. No, it's just like, come on, man. I don't want to see all that. Yeah. And, go, like, and, go, and, going back, and going back to what you were saying about the, the, the Trinity thing. See, if people don't embrace it, then they're going to be like, oh, so you don't like a Latino Supergirl? You're against a black Batwoman? How dare you? <laughs> you know, like that's, what they, not that's, that's what the It's just is a be. bad story. Yeah, yeah. that's like, pretty much what it is. Listen, they're, gonna, they're gonna be like, they're gonna be like, oh, the project failed because the world wasn't ready for diversity. <laughs> yeah, no, no. Yo, you're right. Like, <laughs> the thing is, I want to tell people. I think a lot of people. First of all, I want to look somebody right in the face. So you gonna tell me as a black man, I'm not ready for my characters to be diverse? I've been waiting for what? Like, listen, Black Panther was the biggest thing. I've been waiting for people to sit up there. And bring a black character the same status as you bought every other Marvel character. The fact that I spent two years watching everybody in the world cross up and go Wakanda forever just because was like the biggest geeked out moment you can actually have. So don't tell me I'm not ready for diversity. But just like Black Panther, they took their time making sure that that story was right and every part of it was good. So don't, that's the kind of diversity I want. I want a decent story. I want something that fits. I want something that makes it worth it. Yes, I want to see more women step up and get their flowers for some of the characters they are. But I don't want a woman forced down my throat for a character. I want her, and there's something to be said about why can you not make a an original character? First of all, you want to talk about diversity down your throat. There are bunch of latin characters that are brand new that no one brings to the story i did a whole member 25 female characters yeah yeah do use them yeah me like, more atomic blonde yeah if let me fall in love with someone new don't keep like don't keep giving me the old heroes give me somebody new to fall in love with that way i can sit down and fight for it and say i want to see this character succeed because i want someone new stop giving me stop repackaging old stuff and calling it new give me something new give me i'm I'm excited i'm really excited for the blue beetle because you can tell like they have a latin director they have Mm -hmm. latin showrunners like they have latin writer like like they, everybody involved with this thing, you know, is is from the Latin community, so you can tell it's going to be authentic, and they're going to take it seriously. But aside from Sean, did either of you watch the end of this season of Cobra Kai? Not yet. No, not yet. Because you know, because you know, Miguel, the guy who plays Miguel, he's going to bleed. He's going to play Blue he's Beetle. Blue Beetle, yeah. The I'm not. I mean, I'm not going to spoil it, but the way his character ends in this season of Cobra Kai it felt like the pilot for Blue Beetle. Hmm. And when y'all watch it, you're going to see what I'm talking about. All right. I'm, I'm, I'm going to check it out. It's just that it's not that I don't like Cobra Kai because I was the first one to scream about its praises from after actually watching the pilot. It's just that I got into so many other things. I didn't get a chance to like sit down and watch it, which I plan to. And before we wrap it up, because it looks like Jarrell's cat needs attention. So... <laughs> <laughs> Any uh, anyone have any last words before we we uh we plug it out? Uh, and, anybody got a last rant that they want to give off? Hawkeye was trash. Which what was it? <laughs> oh, Hawkeye was trash. <laughs> Nadia, we took forty five minutes to establish our dislike <laughs> parts of Hawkeye. Now people gotta stop. We could do a whole episode on that on this. I really want to. The DC community is actually less toxic than the Marvel community. Hmm. She has a point there. Surprisingly, because he can get all the shit, but once you say anything remotely bad about Marvel, people want to send you threats. I agree. And a, lot of, and a lot of people that do that don't even watch all the prop because people would be like, oh, everything Marvel is great. And I'm like, oh, so did you like Age of the Shield? Well, I didn't watch that. Oh, did you watch Cloak and Dagger? I didn't see that either. 
You only need, like everything Marvel. Fucking Dagger was what's way that? better than some of the Disney Plus. But you know what the problem is? It's not just the Marvel. It's not Marvel. You got to remember now they're cloaked in with the Disney crowd also. Yeah. So the problem is like you have the toxic Disney people and the toxic Marvel people all banding together to get like real because trust me I'm a Marvel fan and there's sometimes I'll tell somebody something about Marvel oh what do you mean how do you call yourself a Marvel fan if you didn't like this yeah. I'm, like, it's shit. I'm like you like, can't shit on Suicide Squad and not shit on um Hawkeye or like yeah like, Thor I'm a sorry. lot of these people you aren't can't, even you can't shit on things. Martha and then think the whistle is great storytelling yeah. 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 I, we all agree on that <laughs> like, yeah. but a lot of these people aren't even comic book readers to be fair to be the devil advocate of all this stuff they're casuals, okay? They're, they're, they're casual people. They have no idea. All they know is what they're spoon-fed. Like, I had someone tell me the other day, it was just like, oh, my God, these were the original Avengers. I was like... In the the hell they were. <laughs> <laughs> these were the original Avengers in the MCU. No, these are the original in the MCU. Oh, did you know they have a bat... Yeah, there's a black Batman? Yes, in the comics there is. <laughs> like, oh, oh, I didn't... I was just like... So like, like Sean said it best, when we went to see Spider-Man, when Tobey Maguire came out, and he, he, Tobey got less applause than Andrew Garfield. Andrew Garfield. I was just oh, you like, know we getting old. That's yeah. how I knew. That's what I was like. I was like, how dare you, f- you, you <laughs> kill him, sit in this theater and not applaud him? I mean, I have my issues. My theater was crazy for Tobey. <laughs> Nobody but, cheered for Matt Murdock before besides me. I cheered John, for Matt Murdock. I, cheer, I, I jumped when at Matt him. Murdock, <laughs> I legitimately cheered for Matt Murdock. And I think I was the only one in my theater who knew who that was. I don't know whether our audience was because it was late, because we got like one of the last shows. But I was just like, do you people not know who that is? That's I'm dead. Like, I, was, I was just like, what is wrong with this one? <laughs> I was like, how dare you? Like, I was happy for Andrew Garfield, but how dare you people not look at Tobey Maguire and give him his respect? My man didn't even walk in with the suit on. My man walked in with the nine o'clock shadow and didn't give a shit. (laughs) With the pastor's uniform on. (laughs) And they even called him with his his church pastor preaching. Like, come on, people. What's wrong with y'all? And he took the bullet at the end. And I did. I did laugh when they made fun of like where the webs come, where the web stuff comes out of his body. I thought that was that, that, that was beautiful. He was that like, was "That beautiful. stuff come everywhere out of you." And I was like, oh. <laughs> you know, "I was like, yo." And, 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 and I, I don't think people noticed this before. Um, one more thing: when in that big scene when they were all swinging, they landed in the order they played Spider Man. So it was Toby yep. first, then Andrew, then Tom, and I was just like. That wasn't done. That was done purposely. Yeah. That was the, like the old guard, the middle child, and the youngest brother. The See, but then they all had to take their masks off because the and that's another fans, issue I had. The Cavill fans won't know who they are if they all like, keep their masks. Yeah, that on. that that was probably the, that's the, the issue I have of all superhero movies is keep the mask on. I know you you're getting paid ten millions of dollars. You want to keep your, you gotta show your face. But what's the point of signing up for something? You, you're getting paid to wear a mask. Wear the freaking yep. mask. And in Tom Holland's generation, smartphones are everywhere, so they know who he is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that, that, that's, how, that's how they explain it? <laughs> like, I just don't understand Like, what was... Ugh, you know, man, listen, when this comic book thing dies down, it's still just us sitting down here reviewing things, going like, hey, for the real fans out there. Yeah. <laughs> We have actual conversations with real fans. Like it's gonna be real crazy what the uh, casual fans are gonna do in their life because they're gonna have well, nothing else to go back to. Well, because what's gonna happen is I'm gonna be one of these gatekeepers because now they're going into my territory now. Which into is anime, anime, and holy god! Like when I tell you she's not here, when I tell you me Ashley is freaking concerned, and I know I keep saying it's the last one, but just for the, I'm gonna do a quick speed thing for people who don't know. Um, AMC Networks just purchased Sentai Filmworks, which was probably one of the last independent like distributors in the U.S. So now, basically, most corporations own something anime. You have Sony that owns Funimation and Crunchyroll and Aniplex. You have Amazon that is buying up some of the old school animes. You can watch some old school stuff on Amazon. Netflix is producing their own stuff. And if you read the, what I post, the press release, 
it, I, I got so pissed when I was reading the press release because it was just basically saying, oh, this is going to be great. It's, it, they just see anime as money. That's all it is. They don't care about the art. A lot of these companies, they don't care. For the geek culture, it's just money right now. It, anime it, it, is, Sean, and Sean called it a long time ago, and I'm seeing it now even with the YouTube videos that we're doing now. Our, our traffic is going up a little bit more because anime is popping right now. So anime is going to be next, and anime, uh, manga is, all right, I say this all the time, manga is still kicking comic books ass. That's another episode. There's more reasons why comics ain't selling. I ain't going to get into it. I think we, we did that with the Trigger episode enough, but you already know why comic books ain't selling no more. Manga is the, was the top 10 Manga books were the top 10 of 2021. Attack on Titan, Demon Slayer, killed everything Marvel, DC. Only one who really kicked people's ass was Tom McFarlane Spawn. And that's because Damn right. Tom McFarlane and he knows how to write his shit. Okay? Anime is next. You're seeing every a lot of anime properties being purchased right now. You're going to start seeing a lot of horrible live action adaptations. This is for my otakus that's watching right now. Be prepared. Look at her face. Be prepared. I know, I know Nadia is not going to like this, but you want to hear something funny? That petition to get a season two of Cowboy Bebop has gotten so many legs under it. They, Netflix is really regretting listening to the casual person, and they're going to read, they're going to have it redone. They're, 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 they got a lot of people, a lot of actual fans who are like, why did you hate Cowboy Bebop? Like, what did you expect? They got some legs under that. We probably might get another another thing of Cowboy Bebop. Uh, Hopefully better. Oh, I'll, I'll just say this. Let me just tell yeah. the Otakus right now, before we head out, what's coming your way. You have a live adaptation of One Piece coming. God help you. Um, you have a live adaptation of Gundam coming. And you know if they don't do that right, there is going to be hell on earth. When it comes to this community, you got to get Gundam right. I think Netflix has the rights to it. You, I think they're going to be trying, they're going to try Dragon Ball Z eventually again. You're going to have another, they're going to finally do Akira down the line. So you're going to get all these. First, if you fuck that up, you need to, you need to get out of the industry. If you fuck up a live action uh, Akira, you need to get out of the industry. Like you should, everybody involved in it needs to lose their job. You're going to have, so what's going to happen? Not this that we're just, advocating for people to lose their jobs. No, no, not, not that Tacos and Geeks is uh, advocating for that. But I would just say these people should be removed. Remove, re- re- removed. Replaced. Sent to a different department. You know, with a nice service package, you know, and be on their merry way. That way they can still feed their families. Just never touch anime again. But what you're going to see, you're going to see a shift. It's not going to happen this year. It might happen this year, but... You're going to start seeing the shift of focus being from the comic book properties. Don't worry. Yeah, MCU, MCU, DC, they're still going to be there. They're still going to dominate, but you're going to slowly, slowly see anime creeping in into mainstream pop culture. And then all you're going to see is all of a sudden, everybody's an anime fan. Everybody's oh, it's already anime. happening. I see all the model docs. Yes, you're gonna see that. You're gonna see a bunch of <laughs> Nadia's gonna see a whole bunch of cosplay posers. Now everybody's gonna be into cosplay. Oh, 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 yes, you're gonna see a whole bunch of this stuff coming. So I'm just saying to my tossels out there, be prepared. They're coming. <laughs> They're gonna try to change shit up. <laughs> They're gonna try to say we're not diverse. They're gonna try to say we're not representation. They're gonna do all that shit. Just saying, be prepared. Like That's all I'm gonna say. We're gonna get a black Goku one day. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I think Jarrell's like, yep. <laughs> get they a block. They, nah, they're gonna try to cancel Mr. Popo first. <laughs> so, <laughs> I really just said we should cancel Mr. Popo. That was that's some wild shit we had to deal with for years. I, I, I got no beef with Popo, bro. <laughs> I got no beef with him, but damn, bro. <laughs> but that's it. Um, let's wrap it up. Uh, um, Jarrell, you could plug your stuff in first. 
And uh, yes, ladies and gentlemen. So until the sale happens, and despite the shade that's been thrown on this podcast, the Arrowverse is returning on Tuesday, and so is Peacemaker. So we still got HBO Max. Young yes. Justice took a break, so we're gonna get the second half of Young Justice probably closer to the springtime. And I said so. We got Sean's favorite show, Legends of Tomorrow and Batwoman coming up. We got Superman and Lois, which is returning. We got The Flash star and Chester P, and we got Peacemaker for everybody that wants to check that out. So Red Eyes Entertainment for those that still love all the dc television and good content all right uh sean well uh as you know still doing everything with the tacos and geeks uh chronicles is on a slight hiatus right now because we're trying to get everything together and we're going to start doing video so and we're going to start doing our shows bi-weekly instead of everything to test it out uh Baron good still on the longest hiatus i've ever been on any podcast ever uh <laughs> Also, this also happened that the happy that this podcast is back on. Uh, hopefully, I think we should do this one bi weekly instead of like trying to do every every other week. We are for working people who haven't gotten the bag from any other any of these podcasting companies that, that, that want to listen to good content. So, you know, hopefully pray for us. That's for our future that we can do this professionally. Um, also, uh, some new stuff is coming out with me soon to be told, including a produced movie and a couple of other things, but also you can just catch me with some of our reviews when I have time on our tacos and geeks, uh, still doing comic book stuff and still trying to hit every trade show that COVID-19 and the rest of the Decepticons have not canceled out. So, um, I hope to see you guys there soon. <laughs> Nadia. Uh, Gotham Geek Girl. Uh, you can check out all my reviews on GothamGeekGirl.com and on Tacos and Geeks and Geek HQ. Um, I have a lot of cool like unboxes and stuff coming up. The holiday season was pretty insane. I had a lot of products to get out. Um, but you can check all that out on my YouTube. Um, and then uh, for cons, I'm kind of nervous to be around people again. <laughs> so we'll see. But I should be covering Toy Fair um, if it does happen. Uh, that's in February, so hopefully I'll have some cool interviews with that. But uh, yeah, GothamGeekGirl.com and YouTube. And of course, here, Justin at TacosTheGeeks.com, you can check out our Winter Anime 2020, 2022 coverage. I keep saying 2021. Um, some really great shows right now. Definitely recommend World of Harem, which is basically um, funny. Sean, you, you, you will love this show, this concept of this show. This guy is the only man left and all these women want to repopulate with him. It's kind of, it's really hilarious. Oh, so it's um, just a why the last man? Pretty oh, much. No, pretty no, much. it was that she, that she, that she, that she ate me. What do you say? Um, you got hacked what, again. What, what did you say? Uh, <laughs> hey, Megatron, calm down. <laughs> Megatron, bro. Yo, bro, we ain't understand a word you say. <laughs> <laughs> Keep your finger on the button, bro. <laughs> <laughs> try, we'll try again. Can you hear me now? Yes, yeah. you can, Megatron. No, I was saying, isn't that the plot for the movie She Hate Me? It, 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 it takes a lot of liberties from a lot of things. It's not original at all, but it's basically yeah. this guy is like this man killer disease. They call it MK, the MK disease. He gets into cryogenic sleep for five years. He wakes up. And there's only five guys left in the world and they're in charge of repopulating the world. But he doesn't want to repopulate with anybody. This one girl he's had a crush on for years. So he's trying to find her to uh, have a baby with her first before he does anybody else. It, it's OK. <laughs> it's, it's anime. That's that. That's it. That's the plot. So what's the season anime? It's a lot of good stuff out there. So definitely check it out. We are back on Twitch. I just started doing Twitch again. So we just recently played, uh, we're playing Japanese imports. So if you've never seen some uh, Japanese import games, I've been playing uh, Neon Genesis for PSP. I'm going to be playing a lot more PSP games. I'm going to be doing some coverage there. Um, down the line later on this year, we will be doing game. We'll be putting our game nights on Twitch and YouTube. So you'll see me kicking everybody's ass, um, at least in Injustice 2. At least in Injustice 2. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> so stay tuned for that. So we're going to be doing some live coverage of game night. So as always, if you're watching this on YouTube, like, share, subscribe, hit that notification bell. If you're watching this on ONG, check out everything we have here. Our recent interview with James Cameron, um, Nadia's review on Hawk, uh, Hawkeye, 
Jarrell CW reviews are, are, are posted here as well. So definitely check out everybody's channels and we are out later days. Oh, before, before you, before you clang out surprise, something that's surprising on Hulu. Yeah. I need to check out love and monsters. Cute little surprise story. Okay. And also last thing they did announce the boys season two, I believe is coming out in July. I mean, season three. three. So coming out in July. Later days, folks, we'll catch you on the next one. Sean, you can take us out. Uh, that's already done, man. We just want <laughs> to go out. Okay. I'll add post All editing. Right, so later days, folks. Peace.